Inside Stone's Gambling Hall in Sacramento, California, you'll find Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Recognized for its innovative, healthy global cuisine, Sammy's offers menu selections made with local organic ingredients. Indulgent options like truffle fries, duck tacos, artisan wood-fired pizzas, fresh salads and more, along with an eclectic selection of craft beers and classic handcrafted cocktails. Plus, with 40 big screen TVs, Sammy's is also the perfect place to catch your favorite game. Satisfy your craving anytime, 24-7, tableside or in the dining room at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar at Stone's Gambling Hall. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stones Live Poker. I am Jake Rosensteel here with Justin Kelly, and tonight we got five ten no limit hold'em. Oh uh, yeah, boy, I'm ready for this. The five ten's back. Um, so are a couple of uh, local players from Vegas who are now starting to bust out of the main event. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they come right back to Stones. Right back. So you know, there's plenty of money here if they're buying into the main event for ten k. Come here, play some cash. You're gonna love it. And the games are live again. It's good. Of course, <laughs> we're good. So much fun. Uh, we did a, a eight sixteen uh, oh eight game on Monday. That was a lot of fun. Um, streaming limit, streaming 08, little always you know, a little tougher than other games, but it was a lot of fun. Looking forward to doing uh, some more stuff again. Um, but we're back to No Limit Hold'em tonight. Something that I'm sure most of all our viewers and myself are a lot more comfortable with. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, because you know what, we 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 watch this for blood. We want to see the oh my god, he just rivered a monster. He's gonna go all in. This guy's gonna call. It's gonna just be a, a train wreck. Yeah, and, he, and the other guy can't uh, like make his mortgage payment. <laughs> that's, like, that's it. What yeah, we want. that's we what want we want. I mean, like in a sad, fun, awesome way. Yeah. You know. Oh well. <laughs> we oh well. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's uh, walk through our lineup here and see one a new player we have. We haven't had on the stream, at least I don't recall having him on the stream before. Uh, RD sitting on about 1,400. Uh, we got Danny in seat two, a uh, usual suspect. Uh, oh, he's got sure. about 350. He must Just like a 20 year yeah, Sacramento regular right there. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Uh, Tom in seat three, he's got about 1,100 in front of him. Uh, Matt, which we mentioned some of these players coming back from Vegas now. Matt, one of our uh, all time favorite grinders, he's got about 1,700 in front of him. Uh, seat five, uh, I'm gonna pronounce that uh, duck, deuce, D-U-C, I'm not sure, I'm probably I'm probably butchering it. I figure we're gonna call him a different name each time we refer to him throughout the night, and that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> He's got about 1,600 in front of him. Peter in seat six, uh, what else is new? Peter's got about 1,400 in front of him. Uh, Jeremy in seat seven, haven't seen uh, Jeremy on the stream before, so good. Uh, nice to get some things with some fresh blood in this of thing. Of course. Uh, he's got about 1,200 in front of him. Uh, Brian, we all know Brian. I'm pretty sure Brian never leaves that seat. I don't think he ever goes home. He just stays in that seat 24-7, and then sometimes we stream him. And then, yeah, and you got Anthony <laughs> to his left and always in exactly. seat nine. Exactly. And like, to those two, I mean, I don't know what it is about them. They just... No, they just hang out. It's, it's, you know, it's so you can knee kick under the table and split the money in the parking lot. You could probably, like, you know, like, take them out to dinner somewhere and, like, put them at a table, and they would just automatically <laughs> just sit in those, like, like those that. positions. That's it. It doesn't matter. It's good stuff. So, like I said, it is 510 No Limit Hold'em tonight. Uh, what's up, Rick and Barstow in the chat? Hey, guys. Everyone joining us tonight. Right on. And uh, I think we might even have some live. I heard at least one live 20. We might have a, a 510 uh, live 20 straddle game going on here. Nice. You know, as if it wasn't already action enough, let's just beef it up one more notch. Straddles are real. For sure, for sure. It was good. I really enjoyed that 10:25 uh, game last week that we did too. Last Wednesday, we can go a, today. That was a really good 10 and a quarter game. Great game. A lot game. of fun. Super great game. All right, let's get ready. There's yeah, another look at stack sizes. So yeah, what is it? So is, is that duck, deuce? How, how am I gonna how let's, am I gonna mispronounce that? With, let's go with duck until we're correct. Duck. Okay, until we're told otherwise. 007, how's it going? Dondo 111, welcome to the chat. Tie dye panda. Tie dye panda. Panda song's hot right now. So yeah, it looks like there's already forty dollars in the pot, so there's gotta be a straddle on. <laughs> Double seven says hi night bot because you clearly want some attention. You're so needy. You're always just trying to get in there and get in the last word, night bot. Don't Jeez. ignore me. Gosh. <laughs> 
Sometimes I feel like Nightbot's my only friend. <laughs> It's like Jeremy's gonna open up the pot here and make it 70 to go. Oh, I already love this game. I already love this game so much. Jack 10 off. Awesome. And Brian, 65, check that. And Brian calls right behind him with eights. Oh, yeah. I'm loving this table already. Boom, queen, seven, four, two clubs. Not a whole lot of nada here, but Brian's still with the best hand. And uh, Jeremy's gonna fire right out, looks like 50 bucks. And Brian's gonna look him up. A little tester bet. And Brian says no bueno. Four spades on the turn here. Here's the board, improves nobody. And check over to Brian, I think Brian's probably thinking his eights are pretty solid here. He's gonna go ahead and put out a bet. 75? Sounds like something like that. Sounds like, looks like, smells like. Ooh, and Jeremy's yeah. gonna check raise the turn. Strong, and Brian, and Brian insta calls. Had no part of it. Like, insta calls. There was like zero hesitation there. There was negative hesitation. Wow. All right, so double paired board here. Uh, Brian's still with the best hand with eights, but Jeremy's gonna fire it. Looks like uh, pods at 720. Jeremy being the original preflop raiser here. This could be interesting the way he played this. He's gonna make Brian uh, think about it for at least hopefully a second here. It's like three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Brian, nah. just, wow, Brian, you are a beast. Wow, Brian, just no hesitation, beast. Look at our first hand. I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. So a couple cool things I kind of noticed in that hand. Um, one thing was the sizing of, of Jeremy's uh, bets, namely on pre-flop compared to the flop. A lot of players, like I don't know Jeremy. When, when, he, when he down bet on the flop, he yeah, when back. he back, back on the bet, he raises 60, 65 pre and then bet 50 on the flop. A lot of players, when they make that kind of sizing, are I've noticed are very polarized and either being one, they just smash the flop. Yeah. And they're trying to you know keep their opponent in, really price their opponent in to, to call. Um, which makes a lot of sense on the tournament when he goes and check yeah. raises. I mean, that kind of reeks a bit a big hand oftentimes. Or Other they miss, or they miss completely, completely right? With, so it's, like, it's one end of the spectrum or the other. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and when now Brian's got to have I feel like he's got to have a pretty good you know read on Jeremy, and evidently he does because a lot of times, like I said, when you see a player do that, when they you know after they raise and they make, they make somewhat of a smaller bet and then make an, an aggressive action on a later street. They're doing it with a very, very strong hand. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, you bet no, small and no, check I, raise I love, the turn. I love the down bet and then the check raise. I mean, you're right. It puts him. If, if we're talking one end of the spectrum, the other, it puts him on the super beast mode hand end. Yeah. So Brian just wasn't buying it. I yeah. mean, Brian, he was selling it solid, and Brian was not having any of it. So. I'm sure it would. There's a lot of cards. I'm sure that Jeremy would rather see come off the deck on the river mm. to continue God, to any, fire anything, right? But the double pair board, like it, was, it really, it's yeah. Well, yeah, and so once once Brian decides that okay, I'm good here on the turn, the queen on the river changes nothing. Well, and the thing is, like, yeah, and Brian says he's good on the turn. I mean, but even if he was slow rolling a monster like pocket queens, it's even less of a chance that he would have no, like yeah, river quads. So, so unlikely you know, now. Yeah, that he exactly. has a queen. So Brian's a wizard. And a. Uh, and I'm already loving Jeremy. Jeremy is just saying, you know what? If you're if you're gonna take chips, I'm gonna make you work for it. Danny takes down the pot, Ace Jack. Classic Danny. No, Danny is definitely the uh, the Sacramento Rock man. I mean, I've seen him at all the clubs around here from as long as I've been playing cards, man. Yeah, he's a, he's a piece of the furniture, you know. He just doesn't. For sure, and there. it seems and honestly, it seems like he's moved up his game a lot too, because I I don't know if he always used to necessarily play the higher limits. I don't know. I mean, because I didn't I didn't play them myself too much. Um, but now, I mean, I, I see him consistently in the two five, the five ten. Uh, you know, I mean. Yeah. Whatever. He's, whatever. Whatever. He's always playing. Yeah. Whatever they're pitching, I'll play. Yeah. He's like, you guys have 52 cards in that deck, right? I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I don't even care. I'm in. Go fish. Wicked. So yeah, it looks like the round of straddles is gonna hang. So we're playing 5, 10, 20 right now. It's gonna fold the mats button, and any ace is definitely gonna be good enough to open up the pot. Makes it 125 to go. And Jeremy, who put in the straddle on, he wakes up with fives. Brian actually had just limped, had actually limped in with the suited A's, effectively under the gun, under the gun plus one officially. 
And these uh, fine young gentlemen are going to have a three-way. All clubs. Of course, nobody has a club. Typical poker. <laughs> Nip, po Nip, poker, Nip Poker says, what a nitty game. So, of course, Rick Barso <laughs> says, well, your name's Nip Poker. So it's got to be right up your alley, right? I mean, come play some Nip Poker. All right, so uh, fourth club here on the turn. Pot's at 390. Nobody's got a club. This is Battle of the Bold here. Who's going to fire this out? Jeremy checks. Brian's going to do a fist pump check. And over to Matt on the button. Now, Matt's in a position. OK, so he's going to check it. See, Matt's in a position where he knows he could bet it. But in the event, he just in the event somebody totally doesn't believe him, you know what? They could call him with like the deuce of clubs, and he's just crushed, you know. So yeah. it's it's like, eh. I think when you especially when you saw, I mean, there's a little hesitation there from uh, Brian before he checked. Almost like he thought about betting. Yeah. And when he checks, the, and when he thinks about it, and they kind of check, I think a lot of he players, has a medium club. Or, or or they might yeah yeah so some semblance of yeah, showdown value. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, some semblance of okay, I'll make a bad call. Oh, hey, it was a good call. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Rick and Barstow, man. I'd love to see. I can't wait to get you in the game, bud. All the cool kids are going to be in that game, man. Rick and Barstow, Gay Corp, so that's going to be the game. And that's the game, uh, I think we're supposed to have a I Like Hallie Donaldson as well, right? Oh, my God. I haven't wait. had him in the chat in a while. What's I, he, what's he, where's he been? Well, it's, it's a series. It's a series. It's a series. It's a summer. series, you know. Um, so, actually, uh, speaking of which, uh, Tuckman is playing in the series. He's uh, on day two today. And yeah. I saw he posted on his Facebook that he was, you know, hey, I'm you know, hopping the series, wish me luck or whatever, you know, I'm gonna, I want to play good. And I wrote on there, I did the, uh, the the most entertaining, most interesting man in the world, you know, the Dos Equis guy. Yeah. And I said, I don't always play in the WSOP, but when I do, I go deep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Look at this, a couple Ace Kings here brewing. And five dudes suited for Brian. So Anthony made it 100 to go over the $20 straddle, effectively under the gun. Deuce is just going to call on the button Ace King. Look at this here. Solid, solid little $100 pot here. Did Brian call this too? I think Brian called as yeah, well. There we go. Yeah, pots of 315. Boom. Seven, deuce, four. Nothing for Ace Kings. Brian flops the best of it here with a duck. Checks to duck. Boom. Who's going to insta bet a buck and a quarter, it looks like. 125 here. And look at that look from Brian. And now the, the tough part about being in Brian's spot is you have Anthony behind him, too. You have Anthony behind you, so it's like, okay, even if my deuce is good here, if I get involved and Anthony starts getting spunky in this pot, that could that could get a little scary for me. So here's, here's my thoughts there if I'm Brian. Is that Anthony raising under the gun and then checking that flop? He's on seven four deuce. That's gonna miss yeah, him yeah. so often. I think Brian. I think uh, Anthony definitely would have c bet all of his over pairs, mm -hmm. and definitely, definitely any of his flush draws. So Brian checks now. Duck checks behind him here, and I think that's definitely gonna be a bit of a, uh, a stress reliever, a confidence builder for Brian here. Thinking, okay, well, obviously I probably had the best hand on the flop, and if you miss the turn and check the turn, I think. Duck's probably going to fire here, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get Brian off of it. I think, I think Brian's kind of made up his mind here just to show down. And I think the way this hand played out, the, yeah. Yeah, a bet would have looked kind of fishy. It would have. It would have. I mean, if, if, you, if you'd Duck have to go from super thin value with like a seven. Yeah. I think if Duck successfully fires, the, I think Duck would have had to fire all three bullets to get Brian off that hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no way. And even then, on, on seven four deuce, when the queen comes on the turn, if he would have fired again, even then, like I said, it's hard, so hard to connect the, you know. The, the flop of that turn card. Yeah. Um, and unless, and the, unless, the unless you sort of, like, had like a like, king, queen, king, jack, or you know, some sort of queen, x of clubs, yeah. you know, type hand. And the only, and, and the only sort of uh, defining characteristic to prove that, you know, if you're duck, that I have a hand is that you just flat called, uh, you know, call your mother's bet, Anthony's bet, right? You flat called his raise. So you could have a range of things. But I agree with you earlier when you said, Anthony, that's that's going to miss him all day, right? Range, yeah. uh, raising first position, he's got either aces, kings, or ace, king, or something like that, whatever, you he's, know? And, yeah, definitely more big cards. And if he's going to check that compares. flop, I can't I can't see him having, you know, aces Any or other, kings. Yeah. Or, yeah. Especially with a possible fluster out there. So we're still playing with a $20 straddle. Seat three, that's Tom. He's going to limp in. Peter on the button says yes. Jeremy, who's spoken class today, he can come along the pot as well. Anthony, Veronica says, call your mother. She's cool watching. Breeze, 777. Welcome to chat. 
all our friends out there. Veronica the is uh, definitely watching this. I think she's at home drinking what she equivocally calls um, mom, mom juice. juice. <laughs> she's drinking some mom juice uh, at home. So, uh, ST Sherm 2, welcome. Welcome, my friend. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got a couple mystery hands here. Some 4, 3, 8, 3, 7, 3. All the threes are busy. Ace, Queen, Jack. Helps nobody that we know of. I gotta like Anthony or Tom's hand here since we're blind. Tom's still cutting the chips. We were joking earlier, we actually have uh, Kenny on our action tracker, and he was saying earlier how he was a bit tired, and we said, so if the action completely halts, and you go to the next hand and it hasn't changed, just Kenny <laughs> fell asleep, so we just gotta bang on the wall right here and wake him up a little bit. Ace, Queen, Jack. And somebody, when a flop like that comes down and there was no raise pre-flop, it's gonna miss a lot of players unless the player has you know, try to limp in some like you know ASEC small type hand. The problem that I personally find myself struggling in those in playing those kind of pots and in limp pots um, is when you have players at the table that have strong limping range. Players that'll limp, you know, big Broadway cards. Yeah, oh yeah. Queen, yeah. Indy, or like yeah. even the Ace Jack, and they're only raising pairs or, or super premiums. Yeah, they're raising like tens or better. That's it. And then yeah. you look at that flop. It's like, well, in ordinary, ordinarily, think, okay, well, most players can here can never be like really strong because there was no, there was an open. But then on the other end of it, it's like certain players that'll limp those type of hands. I mean, they can easily be two pair plus there. Yeah, and yeah. It's just, I think you have a question there in the chat. Jake. Talk to me, Goose. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. I'll be there to compensate for you guys for when for when uh, you guys make the final table, or when, for when you specifically make the final table. Yeah, I actually, uh, I, w- I would have loved to uh, do some commentary then, but I'm still going to be in uh, Santa Clara, actually, just hanging out. Big old arcade expo down there. Nice. Nerd out a little bit. Pinball's an arcade. How can you not? They turned, basically, they turned the entire Santa Clara Convention Center into a retro pinball and arcade, like, straight out of the 80s. Wow. Like music pumping, like giant tube TV, like the whole nine. You know, Way like cool. it's giant, like 500 games. So that's where I'm going to be. Nerding out, nerding out's getting pretty popular. It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, nerding I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going Pokemon. I don't even want to say the word on the but stream. But I mean, let's come on. You know what we're talking there. about. I mean, I'm not nerding out's getting pretty big. I honestly, my favorite part about that whole Pokemon thing, why we got a quick second, is that I can't wait to see all the crazy news stories that happen. We've already seen a few news stories about like, oh my god, a guy met a girl and got a date, or you know, kids got robbed playing this game in a park or something. But like, just wait, there's gonna be like, a kid was climbing a cliff to get a Pikachu and like fell off, like it's gonna get, just wait, it's gonna get so bad, so bad. I mean, we hope not, but we, we know. But we, we know it is, guys. It's society. It's I'm sorry. It's thinning the herd, man. It's Darwin coming in and being like, hey, guys. Sorry, man. Natural selection. Yeah, I mean, I don't make the rules here. I'm just commentating on them. <laughs> 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 I mean, just saying. Every time I look at Jeremy, I want to sing Pearl Jam. I just can't. Like, I'm just <laughs> like... Loving it. Mm-hmm. All right. Brian's mm-hmm. checking out. Jeremy. Anthony's gonna call his mother. He has six nine suited. Little does he know he's got a monster. Two overs to Jeremy's three four. I like Jeremy, man. He's getting splashy with his raises, regardless of what he has. He's just like, and he, honestly, he's really disguising his hand. He could have anything at this point. And he kind of does. Look at that. Ace queen ten all diamonds. And of course, nobody has a diamond. That's the second time now we've had an all suited flop with nobody having a piece of it. Hardy's gonna check his ace. Jeremy's gonna bet it. Boom, and another diamond, super scary card for this for this board here with these hands. Artie's gonna check it over to Jeremy, who I'm hoping is gonna continue. Oh, he's gonna check it. Yeah, it could be a disguiser bet. Depends how this river plays out here. I think Artie's gonna check it again, and I think Jeremy's got a fire to win this, and he knows it. Solid hundred into 190, and it's good. Take it down. Take it down, Jeremy. Take it down. Jeremy for president. <laughs> Jeremy for press. You know what? I would take Jeremy for president. I don't even know the guy. I would take him for president over any of our candidates. He's racing 4-3 off in Jack 10. I mean, I mean, he, yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. He's got my vote. <laughs> He's got my vote. I'm in. I, it's it. He's my right in on the ballot. It was going to be Donald Duck, but now it's just going to be Jeremy from seat 7. That's what it's going to be. I'm just going to write Jeremy from seat 7, and you guys figure it out. You guys figure it out. You find him. He's going to be the press. Zip zap 81 oh, welcome to the chat. <laughs> They're saying when Rick and Barstow plays, it's going to be a... Here's, here's, here's the commentary. And Rick and Barstow folds again. He drove 13 hours, and he's only played his blind. 
<laughs> oh man, I love it. Folds to Anthony on the button, he's got sixes. And Danny has one of his sixes. Montana Banana over there for Jamie with nine deuce. So you still got a horse in the main? I do. I'm out of horses. I, well, uh, technically, I have a couple horses. So, oh, good for you. Uh, wow. Well, the uh, you know we had Jake here from the Stone Survivor series. Yeah. So we all agreed to kind of do like a small like two percent type thing. So I got a couple percent there. And then uh, Michael Longcar, a, a fellow commentator here, is also in the main. Who I just recently yeah, saw. Yeah, Mike stolen. So yeah, one, yeah. one stolen, right? Yeah. So you start with 50k in chips in the main. Um, day one ended. He was down about 25 or 23k, and now he's back up to 75k. And he never said he, he said he never had to go all in, which is a great feeling when you can build a stack and never have to risk every slowly. So back to the action here. Fours versus sixes. Nine three king rainbow. No help to anybody. Pots in about two twenty. Looks like RD is gonna fire out here into Anthony. Uh, ooh, one seventy five. A sizable bet. And Anthony's just wondering, are you full of it? Really interesting lead there by RD. Anthony. It's gonna sniff this one yeah, out. Yeah, you know what? And I think maybe because of the bet sizing, maybe it was a little high. Maybe Anthony's like, eh. Well, and it's such, it's such a, you know, uh, I it's mean, a, it's a rando board yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, and I mean, leading into the razor, I mean, often, I mean, is is so unconventional for for most players. And mind you, I mean, leading into sixes, there, I mean, probably is gonna be profitable long term because the sixes are just gonna fold most of the time. And look at this, so now RD kind of gives up his position here and checks over to Anthony, and I love the way Anthony fires out, and I like the way Anthony plays his hand because Anthony right there would have done the same thing with a king or any sort of random high cards, and the queen peels off on the turn. He's gonna take that all day. You know, I really don't, I, I really think Anthony, the way he played that hand, I think Anthony was, didn't think he had the best hand, I think Anthony was probably putting RD on leading some sort of a nine, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Just, maybe you see a lot of players will kind of like, make it kind of like a little feeler bet. Mm -hmm. And Anthony thought, well, if I float here, and well, I, can, I can take it away on the turn. Yeah, and especially when it under hits the turn, you know, king on the flop, queen on the turn. He's got to th he's got to put Anthony, and the thing is, he's got to put Anthony on any of that. Yeah. You had to have called me with any sort of paint cards. You either have a straight, a draw, a, a queen, a king. You have to have me crushed here. Yeah, so, I think if Anthony thought he had, actually thought he had the best hand, I think he checks back the turn. Yeah, 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 for sure. Keeps keeps uh, uh, RD's bluffs in. Taking it down. He called his mother. He got some advice. Oh, I'm Levin, son. Welcome, my friend. Duck. No whistling, no cat calls in the booth. Calm, <laughs> calm down, calm down. Simmer down now. Pretty relax. Donna, summer, simmer down now. And duck, taking it down. King, queen. Yeah, I have no horses. I have no horses. Uh, I strolled by the table earlier and uh, I talked to Matt, I hadn't seen Matt here in a while, and I asked, and that was like, in the first question, hey, do you have any horses left in the main? And yeah, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not, not no, anymore. No, no, no. So, so sad. All, all our friends falling short. I still got friends in the main, I just got, I got no, I've, I got no action in them. Yeah, honestly, and the cool thing is, is and I think this is pretty, pretty commonly known about the poker community, is that it's like you're just you're just rooting for your friends, right? You're rooting for your friends. You're rooting for like the people local to you. Like it doesn't even matter. You don't have to have a piece of them. You don't have to have whatever. It's just like we just want good people that we know to do big things. You know what like I mean? Like bubble. I want them all to bubble. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> no, you're the worst. No, no. You're the worst. No. You're gonna go out there and just start holding up signs behind them on the rail. Bubble, <laughs> bubble. Oh my god, I can see it. Jake for bubble. Jake for bubble. God, be the worst. Be such the worst. Oh goodness. At least, I mean, I think they now they uh, they give the bubble guy, the, the bubble boy, uh, a buy yeah, the next, You know, and I think that's main. super cool, right? Now you know what that means, though, is it sucks to be second from the bubble. Oh right? yeah. Like, then you like, okay, I'm, I I bubbled it. They're like, oh, you you got a you got a, a buy in, right? And they're like, no, 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 no. no. I was the bubble of the bubble. Uh, yeah, it, I was the the bubble. <laughs> it was the worst. It was the worst. Jeremy over here waking up with fives. Uh, Duck raises to forty with king queen. Jeremy's gonna make the call. And uh, looks like Matt's gonna make the call as well. A couple of fun hands here going to the flop. Nobody's in anybody's range, so this should be interesting. Maybe a four, five, six would be a little disgusting. King, queen, five, two spades. <laughs> We're so disgusting. All right, almost. Queen, six, jack. That is going to be a big flop for Duck here. Nine gives him a 93% edge, super huge. 
Um, and he's going to fire, and mostly, he also has a King of Diamonds as a running diamond backup, but I think he's really firing here because of the diamonds. But, uh, yeah, he was way ahead there. Yeah, like, there's a lot of robbery combos you can get value from. Unfortunately, no one else had those hands, but he can get value from worse. For sure. Anthony on the big stack here with 3.6k and Brian with 2.5k in second. Uh, no, no coincidence that they're sitting next to each other. Maybe that's where they do it. Maybe that's they know where all the chips gravitate towards. They're like, oh, so all the chips go to seat eight and seat nine. The, the Don't worry about it. Tilted. It is. It is. They put matchbooks under the leg like they're playing pool or something. Oh, we got Jimmer, big Jimmer coming in the dealer box. Stowe actually stopped by Stones on Saturday. Good for him. People aren't buying in super deep in this game yet. Um, it is table stakes. Like I said, the game, the game just started a little while ago. And I think the 5 10 I it starts out. I forget what the cap is, but um, this game will get deeper as it goes on. Yeah, I was players, say, players yeah. get felted, new players come in and out. Um, this game will get deeper. I was going to say, you get a couple all in felts, this game will get deeper real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, it's like, no one's like super, super short. I mean, everyone's every, everyone's like at least 100 big steep, it seems like. Oh, look at this. We got our two uh, superstars over here, Anthony and Brian, with King Queen versus King King. Danger, danger, depending on how that flop goes. Peter puts in the straddle. Jeremy makes 65, 10, I, I, 6. I'm sorry. I'm loving Jeremy, dude. I'm, he's just, he's action galore right here, regardless of what he has, and I love it. He can pinch any two cards, and he's like, all right, guys, we're going up again. We're going to raise it up. So let's see what Brian does here. So Brian, he flats. Brian flats King Queen. I like that. Oh man! And Anthony coming in strong here. He says, no, you guys aren't sucking out of me. 275. And that's a huge raise from Anthony. I mean, I think everybody knows that Anthony is, is has a really large hand here. He's not messing around. Duck ditched his fives. It looks like uh, Peter's gone. I believe we're gonna see Jeremy be gone too. Maybe not. I don't know. Jeremy could surprise us. Yeah, I don't think Jeremy's calling, but I mean, on the bright side, Jeremy knows that his hand's unlikely to be dominated. He's just also, but he's very likely to be crushed. Yeah. Um, See, and even, like, I'm not the only one who likes him. Even I'm Lyman Sounds like, Jeremy's my hero at the table, man. <laughs> the higher V-Pip, the more I like him. And what I love about it is when Jeremy seems like, you know, he's one of those players, but when those hands connect, you know, you're completely blindsided. Oh, yeah. How do, you, no. how do you put someone on 10 -6? No, that's where it flops like 10, 10, 6, and you have to like double check the board, and you're like, did this just happen? Yeah. <laughs> did this just happen? And you're sitting there with like 9, so like, okay, well, it's unlikely for him to have yeah. 10 because yeah. there's two 10s already out there, yeah. 10, 10, 6. And not, nine, only does he have, not only does he have 10, 6, but somebody else has ace 10, and they turn an ace, yeah. and that guy's good too. <laughs> and then you river a 6, and then you pay them both off. So that's what happens, or river a 9. It's science. It's science. It's not like it's happened to both of us multiple times and I cry about it at night in my pillow or anything, but you know, maybe. Danny's out, Tom's out, Matt's gone. Duck's non existent. Action over to Peter here. Oh, Peter's gonna make the call. No chops here. No chops in the live stream. I don't think so. Brian's thinking, no chop, man. I got AIDS. Don't chop it. Oh, it looks like it's 5k max for this game, actually. Yeah, it is a 5k max. 10, 4, 5. Uh, looks like uh, Jeremy's going to connect with a 5 here. Uh, Peter missed, and Brian's 8s are still the best. Jeremy fires. Brian's going to flat call here. Queen on the turn. Gives a spade, possible spade draw out there as well. Now, Jeremy checks over here. Brian's going to check behind. Nine on the river, would have completed some weird running spades, and Brian's just going to check for showdown and take the pot. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy's going to hand put out. Jeremy's going to have some fives, I mean, like he did, but it's unlikely he's going to call a bet. He's also going to have a lot of, a lot of like, really weird or really, like, you know, like weak tens there, like 10 7, 10 8, things like that. In which, if Brian does go for value with his, you know, thin value with his eights, he's just going to get snapped off. Well, that, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's like, it's like, like you said, you're only getting called by better hands, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, yeah. you're not going to get called by a five there. He's I don't think Jeremy's calling a five. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, like, Jeremy is like, you know, He'll kind of, put the pressure on you with a yeah, five, exactly. but, he's, but he's not going like, to just check all No, exactly. There. So Jeremy's kind of splashy, but he's, he's no slouch. I mean, he's not going to just pay you off with a five. You know what I mean? No. See, Anthony, he's stepping away from the table, texting. He's calling his mother. He's seeing what's up. 
Live 20? I do love a good 510 with a live 20. Ma, Ma had kings. Ma, 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 I re raised the huge and everybody folded. Ma. That's so nice, Anthony. I like how Anthony hops in the chat room too and kind of chimes in. He's like, look, I was playing with this guy. This is the way, this is what I put him on. This is why I played a hand the way I played it. No, that's actually really, really great. It's a lot of it, I mean, some of these spots you know, that Anthony found himself in on the stream and then we said he's coming in the chat box and explaining you know, the method to his madness. Yeah, well, exactly. Like, like we were talking about the 1025 game last week and Anthony literally got felt in the hand before the stream started. Yeah. We literally started the stream. You can see Anthony just getting up and be like, well, okay, bye guys. Yeah. And that was because well, that he sucked. had, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was because he had ace king against aces and they both flopped like ace rag rag like you know yeah. game time <laughs> rick and barso says anthony mom send money <laughs> western union immediately please ma i think this guy's bluffing i really do i got ace high i'm gonna need some cash i'm gonna need some cash because this could go south really quick <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the chat. The chat's just hanging out with us. They're like, hey guys, it's a big round table. Live 20 again as usual. I love it. It's a good, everybody plays the good old 5, 10, 20 game. It's classic. Yeah. It's a staple here at Stones. Holes of lines. Anthony Take says, it. nope, not interested. See, uh, you make money just by straddling. It's and easy. you and Justin had mentioned, I believe, I watched, I caught a little bit of the Omaha stream because, you know, you're way above my level in Omaha, man. I just love to watch it. I just love to watch it. It's fun. Hey, it's, it, it's fun, it's fun. So, uh, I, I heard you guys talk and nobody's ever hit a bad beat on the stream. I would love for that to happen. That would be that. so awesome. Well, the whole thing bad beats what? We're 50, 50K, 56K? Oh, yeah, 50, 50, yeah. 50, it's, oh, yeah, 55, 50 56K, yeah, it's, yeah. It's all over the place, yeah. Um, that would be so cool. Uh, not to mention the fact that I think we'd probably have a breather because in, they have to count down the deck. They got to get all this in. Like pretty much, it takes like a half hour, anyways. I think when they we could go to the bar, they they could buy us some drinks. Exactly. Come back. This sounds like a great idea for everybody involved. You guys are going to get thousands of dollars. We're going to get some cocktails. I think everybody wins here. All right, action over to Matt here with tens, and uh, he's going to make it fifty. Over to Jeremy with a couple of mystery cards, and honestly, I can't even begin to think what Jeremy has. So he's going to make the call. So I think our round of straddles ended with Danny here, who limped in ace four and now is going to fold. All right, so we have tens against the mystery hand and the flop. Ace, ace four. Good flop for Matt's tens. It's unlikely someone has an ace two on the board. By the way, whenever you say things like that, and I'm in the hand, somebody always has an ace. Okay, somebody always has, I can literally hear you in my head like, well, it's unlikely somebody has an ace because there's two aces on the board. And the guy's like, oh, not only do I have an ace, I flopped a boat. And I'm like, nice hand. Yeah. And I cry stupid. all day to myself. Stupid logic reasoning. Stupid, stupid. logic, stupid mathematics. I love uh, D007. Is, is there a stream chair for the, the bad beat? That's awesome. It'd be rad. All the spectators, everybody gets, uh, I don't know, they should all get like 20 bucks. Why not? Thanks for watching. And you can use that 20 bucks to subscribe. Speaking of which, click on the heart in the bottom left. That way you'll know every time we go live. Always good times. And uh, for this, the we're going to stream the final table of the tournament this Sunday. It's not different, you know, because it's a one-day tournament, so we don't know exactly when we are going to get down to the final Ooh, table. Yeah, so you don't so know. So if you follow, you'll get you'll uh, be notified when we're going to go live. Should we should get down to the final table sometime between seven and nine? Yeah, I was going to say. So, so when you get that alert on your phone at midnight, and your wife is just like, "Honey, what's that?" You're like, "Hold on, we just got to the final table. I got to watch a stream. I know this yeah. is kind of weird." Yeah, no, just go for it. No, that's rad. And I, I actually subscribed to a couple people on Twitch that I told, that stream at random times. So it's really yeah. nice to be just like, oh, hey, check it out. So-and-so streaming. I can watch that because I'm not doing anything else right now. Yeah, I follow uh, uh, Randy, Lou, a couple other poker players. And you, you know, whenever they're going to play online. Or yeah, exactly. Just, whenever, whenever Which can, de like. can definitely be at random hours, you know what yeah. I mean? For sure, so. I actually just did my first uh, Twitch stream from home the other day. Did a little uh, fun time. We were just opening up a crazy new limited edition Ghostbusters pinball machine. Solid. Yeah, it was pretty fun. A really cool game. Stream the unveiling. Yeah, lots of fun. And then I realized after the fact that I didn't go into settings and click save streams. So once we were done, it was gone. And I'm like, that sucks. But we had a lot of fun, and that's cool. 
See, on the right side of that, you can like totally inflate the story of what actually happened because now there's no like no long term. Yeah, exactly. Then criminals yeah. came in, they stole my laptop. Oh, that's that's what happened. <laughs> Everything went crazy. Pure chaos. Cats and dogs living together. All right, action over to Anthony here. Six seven of spades in the cutoff and uh, duck. I, God, duck can be twenty five here. Anthony re raises to sixty five. What a beast! Taking it down. And the rich get richer. Our chip leader maintains his position. So, you know, I hope we get, uh, you know, like uh, what was Seth Curry, right? Who moved yeah. to? He's going to Dallas. Dallas. Um, I, you know what? I would not be surprised if, when he happens to come back to town, just to hang out for a minute, if he just like comes in and plays and hangs out in the stream yeah. and like, hey, are you guys having a stream? Like, I'll, I'm in town. Let yeah, just come um, out. Justin talked to him. I mean, I mean, let him know that he's always welcome to come back. And he's and that's what he said. He's all I know for sure. When he comes back to town, yeah. we'll, we'll get it back on the stream again. Absolutely. You can't you can't just let him like you know you know hit and run. Yeah, good people, good times, man. Five. Raise here to 35 from Jeremy. Jack eight off. You know, do we know how, sorry, real quick, do we know how Jake is doing in the main event, our, uh, our horse from the Stone Survivor Series? No. No, no, we, we know, we, we know he busted. Oh, no, busty, busty. No, yeah, he, no, I only have one horse in the main event. I was kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, uh, Jake got mixed up in a big pot uh, end of day one. He flopped, uh, flopped the nut straight. A uh, guy had two pairs. So they got it in. So a lot of ships went in the middle. And then, um, oh. And uh, the other guy hit it. So, I mean, so Jake made day two. Um, but he was real short, and uh, unfortunately was uh, not able to run it up. Yeah. And now I actually am just realizing Rick and Barstow's question. Uh, he was actually talking about you on Sunday. I, uh... <laughs> so brutal. Oh, man, look at this board here going on. Of course, nobody has a heart to contest here. Already takes the pot. Uh, Vancouver viewer, uh, I think we have some clarification there on, a, on how we're going to pronounce five names. Uh, it's pronounced Duke. Okay, we're, we're going to go with Duke until we hear otherwise. We're going to trust Vancouver here and we're going to go with it. Appreciate that. See, yeah. love the viewers helping us out. Helping us not sound like, you know, schmucks. Well, I mean, hey, we're trying to sound as uh, schmuckless as possible here, okay? Life is hard, though. Yeah, it's not easy. How many out there? 520. So uh, the main event, uh, do they have a record turnout and something like higher than the last couple of years or something like that? Yeah, the um, turnout was the highest that we've had in, in, for in, in, in five years. That, awesome. awesome. And, and, and I read a, a small article on that and they said something like a lot of players use that as kind of a, just an overall metric to kind of view like how healthy the game is. How, yeah, where right? the state I of I mean, because obviously, at. you know, you're, it's not your first time playing cards, you're not going to go spend 10 grand and play in the World Series of Poker, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously these guys have either satellited in or they're regular poker players or the guys with money who are good enough to think they should be there. And uh, and that's rad. I think that's super cool that poker's healthy and good because it was on the decline there for a minute, you know, and I'm glad that it's, it's staying strong. Look at this flop for Peter here. Seven, Happy eight, seven, birthday. monster trips. Early birthday for Peter. Gets no love. Unfortunately, nobody has anything to pay him off here. 6,700 in the main this year. 4,700 alone on day one. See, that's insane. So you got like a thousand players, a thousand players, and then 4,700. That's huge. I went out to the uh, the uh, the series this year, and it's just it's awesome, man. I mean, it's out there, such an incredible view. It's I mean, it's crazy because if you've never been there before, it's just a sight to see. Even if even if you don't play and you just happen to go to Vegas for a family you know event or whatever you're doing. Stop by the Rio, check it out, look around. I mean, just walk in one of those rooms and the sheer size and amount of poker tables and amount of people that all four of those rooms, each one of those rooms holds is just epically crazy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I walked in uh, middle of the night, you know, really super early, like 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, when I first got there. And there was like, you know, nobody in the one room. And just, just to take a quick video of this whole room, I mean, I showed a couple of my friends. I'm like, you wonder how they have these tournaments with thousands of players. This is this how. There's is how. four rooms this size, you know, and they're like, whoa, that's amazing. I mean, it's just something to see. It's a spectacle. Watching him play open face Chinese poker for like 25 bucks a point. Yeah, I'm sitting here, right? I play it with this guy, we have like 10, 20 point swings, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. God. I mean, these guys are like, okay, I owe you 400, you owe him 500, you owe him 600. I'm like, oh, God. Rip it. Yeah. Matt here stepped out a little bit. He made it 65 to go pre flop, I believe, with 9 6 off. 
Brian defends Jack Ten of Clubs. Check bet fold. Interesting Matt stepping out there with a the 9-6 off. You know, a lot of these players, you know, they, they go back and and watch these streams you know, that they play in. Um, and, you know, Matt's got a reputation as, as, a, as a very aggressive player, but a very, you know, a tight aggressive player. And some of the stuff, you know, that you might see him do, like, namely, like, they are racing 9-6 off, might be a little bit of advertising, too. Like, you know, hey, look, I, I'm not just playing, you know, Aces Plus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, mean I can have junk. And I feel like, and I feel like you're a player, and, and a lot of these guys are players who, whenever uh, you know, like let's say I bet and nobody calls me, and I'm going to show down my hand. I, whenever I'm showing my hand and I don't have to show it, there's generally a reason for that. I'm using that either to represent maybe you know, like hey, I'm always strong when I'm you know maybe going to execute a bluff. I know you're not a huge yeah, fan you're, of it. You're selling something. But just in general, yeah, I'm selling something. You know, I got the ice cream cart. You know, hey, what ice cream you want? You want Sometimes the ninja you're selling BS, but yeah, you're selling something. You know, something. whatever. Yeah. You want the BS? You want the little Ninja Turtles ice cream with the little gumball eyes? I mean, we got it all here. All right, going to the flop three way action. Deuces, Matt. Queen Jack. Ooh, good old flop for Queen Jack there. Top pair for Peter. Brian with the mystery hand. And that kind of board, Jack 9-6, that's kind of the texture we kind of referring to, smacking someone's range. I mean, big blind defense, you know, range hands are going to have a lot of that. You know, Jack 9, 8, 10, queen type cards in them. And I think you're just seeing Matt save the money most all the time. And after checks through for a second time. You can call me Joker. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the game. Matt's going to try to pick up this pot. Deuces never loses, that's what I hear. He's gonna try to pick it up, but Peter is not having it. Peter is really not having it. I think we're coming in for a solid raise here from Peter. Now the check back and then raise. We can't see Brian's card, but check the check back and raise. Peter's actually repping a hand stronger than he's got. Yeah. And when a player will do when they check back the pop and then raise, you know, on a later street, they're you know they're very strong. We mentioned yeah. that earlier. And I think when Peter's doing that, he's actually hoping then that way, you know, Matt might, if he does call, will then check River and, yeah, he, exactly. can, and he can show the hand yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like uh, sometimes you do that to almost to guarantee yourself a free card. Yeah. You know, you're like, ah, oh, whatever. Just check it. It's a common, it's a, it's a really common play that you see in limit games where someone will raise a flop, you know, for one smaller bet. Yeah, exactly. And so they don't have to call a big bet yeah, on the turn. And yeah, you, you could, you know, it's, it's really common to do withdrawals. I mean, you can see the board out for, for less limit players that's common along with a very similar move of i mean more so in no limit than limit but the move of betting out a little bit smaller than maybe you think they would bet yeah <laughs> so you try, almost, try, try to lay your own price to draw i don't want to check all 100 so i'm just gonna I bet know, 50. i know i know i know, I know. that's good and uh, we haven't seen you be really pained by any of the play yet, so that makes me happy. But there is Tylenol readily available for any headaches <laughs> that you may incur. Jake, so. uh, everyone's a critic. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got an opinion. Brian's gone with King Six. Anthony's literally gone from the table. RD's out of there. Uh, what do we got there? I love it. So Peter makes it 30. Jeremy makes it 130 with 7-3. God bless him. I am just loving Jeremy so far. I mean, that right there, hashtag good for the game. Like, period, all day, every day. Crusher. Yeah, all day, every day. I love it. It does this... not even matter. And it's not like Jeremy's huge stack. Jeremy's actually got, he's the short stack at the table. And he just, yeah, well, it's it. Like, right there. Oh, so, well, yeah, it's about six and change. Yeah, six and change. But I just love it. I'm like, zero craps given right there. You know what I mean? Kick rocks. Yeah. Guys, I'll play what I want. I will raise every hand. Bring it. I'm trying to pronounce that name. Disjunctive Psylogism? Wow. Wow, that's all you, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, welcome to the chat. Uh, first time viewer. Yeah, welcome. Uh, we are watching Stones Live Poker here at from Stones Gambling Hall, just outside of Sacramento, California. Yeah, right off the freeway. 10. The freeway at 80, otherwise I know it's down the street. Like, oh, you live in San Francisco. Oh, it's down the street. Oh, it's down yeah, the street. It's down, it's down 80. It's a long street down Highway 80, but it's a street. Yeah, close enough. All right, here. Looks like we got a race to 30 from Peter, a re-raise to 90 from Jeremy. And Peter's going to look him up here. Boom. 3, 9, 10, all diamonds. Peter with the only diamond here and a gut shot. Jeremy technically with the best hand here, but not in the advantage spot. 
Peter's gonna look back for diamonds. Sometimes I do that blatantly at the table. I'll look and like I see somebody going to look at their cards and I'm like, everybody, let's all look together. Let's all yeah, do like a diamond everyone, check. Everyone, one, two, three, diamond check. Every, one, two, three, diamond check. Oh, that's a heart. Damn. Peter smacks a turn, but Jeremy does pick up an inside straight draw to Broadway and he gets there. Oh, he totally gets there. Oh, sick. I love and it. No diamond, too. Uh, I'm Lyman Sun apparently needs a ride from San Francisco, so I'll just hop down the street real quick and get him. I'll be back in like five minutes. Top two for Peter. Broadway for Jeremy. That was running nasty, nasty right there. And he's going to call him. And you know, the, the sick part about this, too, is that, I mean, you know, if you're watching the stream, these guys don't necessarily know this because he hasn't showed down a lot of hands, but Jeremy has every time had like a 10 6, a 7 3, a this, that. And the one time he's got like the basically the stone cold non flush nutskies is against Peter's top two. Like that, and that's, that's, that's poker, man. I mean, it's just nasty. Yeah, Peter had it all on the turn. Wow, huge. And all the pairs. Huge. All the and that's going to double up Jeremy, so he's no longer a short stack. He's sitting there. Uh, he's like a three-way tie there with uh, Peter around uh, 1100 bucks. For those of you uh, watching Gay our stream corpse. for the first What's time, up, buddy? Uh, chip denominations, red chips are $5 chips. Uh, Greens are 25. Uh, the one unique thing you'll see here at Stone's Gambling Hall versus a lot of other places is the $100 chips here at Stone's are the white chips. So Generally, those, those are what, ones at other places or what? Yeah, they, ones are kind of variety. A lot of places, you know, the whites are, are, will be ones or you don't even see whites. You know, the places yeah. are blues. You know, $1 chips either, in most places are either, are either blue, as they are here, or white. Uh, here, the uh, white chips really stand out. They're that bright white. And uh, Monday, I saw you guys playing with uh, the what the pink, the peach chips, the peach colored chips or whatever they are, for the uh, for the Omaha. What were you guys playing with? What color? Yeah, the those? peach colored uh, two dollar chips. Two dollar chips, super random. Those are I super like clean. It. Yeah. Well, like you said, they're super clean because we only bust them out for the eight sixteen games, right? I mean, like that's it. That's it. Yeah. So disjunctive says, uh, yeah, whites are usually a buck. Yeah. Well, here they're a buck with a few zeros after it, so they're good to have. If I had the stack of white somewhere else that I could have here and turn them into hundreds, I'd be a super loaded man. Absolutely. Look at this, all the queens. Queen 7, Queen 10, Queen Jack. Peter makes it 35 to go under the gun plus 2 with Queen 10 of spades. It's going to get called by Brian, Jeremy, and it looked like did Peter, or did Anthony come along as well? Yes, no? No, yes? Ace, King, Jack, Happy Rainbow. Birthday, Peter. Super monster nutskis for Peter. No questions asked. Here's the best hand. And honestly, out of that last pot, I'm, I'm happy for Peter. And uh, Peter picks up a spade draw. <laughs> and a spade draw. Free rolling. Super free rolling. Uh, and that's going to give Jeremy a pair of fours. Brian already had a pair of jacks. Jeremy's checking out. Brian will look him up here. He's got a pair and a straight draw. And he gets there. Not uh, not Brian, but Peter was just already the nuts turned into another monster second. Oh wow, and he checks it over. Now I don't know if they did that maybe because they have they know each other and maybe they're playing it cool. But right Peter there, Peter thought Brian would bluff at you it. You think Peter was try You think Peter thought Brian would represent the spades? <laughs> yeah, he definitely thought Peter might that Brian would, would rep spades, and or if he, you know, just had some sort of busted Broadway draw. He might try to pick up if he just had a queen or a ten. I feel like Brian's smile right there is just like, nice try. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next time. I know bluff now. Peter. Dirty Peter going for the check raise. Like I, I like his hand only got better. Like he was there was never a point in that pot where you're worried. You're like, I flopped the nuts, I still have the nuts on the turn, and I basically rivered essentially the nuts again. You know, like bring it. Peter. <laughs> Peter, you crafty dog. Very sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> I don't know, man. Gay Corpse doesn't want me to say the Nutskis anymore. I, I, I'm a fan of saying it. Sorry. We'll see. How, we'll see how it goes. I'll let you two work it out. I'll make my best attempt. <laughs> The train act of 2016. The train act. <laughs> we'll see. I'll give it my best. 30. Action folds over to Anthony. He's going to open up the pot. I can't wait to see Gay Corpse in person here playing in the Veronica and Friends game so we can actually be like, now I can really razz him in person. Right. I'm just going to sit there and commentate right next to his ear. All right. Three, nine, six here. Two diamonds. A pair of sixes for Jeremy. Or 
Yeah. Catching up the action, I think Kenny might have been sleeping. I do love the Meat Boy logo, though. Look at this. Uh, is Doc still on the hand? I think we're catching up here in the action tracker. Yep, so he... Did he turn open-ended? I'm lost. Yeah, no, I feel like this, <laughs> this is one of those, uh, those online tables where you switch hands every time you fold. You switch tables. It says Doc folded. No, he didn't. Anthony didn't win. I'm so confused right now. Check, check, show time. Oh, monster, he, he turned the monster straight. He had diamonds draw, and oh, look at the flip. Wow, just duck had everything. Duke had everything. Thank you, sir. Flops, he opened flops, so they straight with the open ended straight flush draw. Wow. Wow. Runs out smooth. I got lost in the action there, but I saw at one point Anthony did raise. Did he, did he check? No, he didn't check the bottom. Duke led, Anthony raised the turn, it looked like. Wow. I got somewhat mesmerized trying to. I, well, no, because like, you see, you, you like, see all the on? hands, and it's just like, here's the pot, fold, win, fold, win, bet, call, raise. I'm like, guys, I don't I don't know what's happening here. I blacked out. Jeremy makes it 40 to go, king nine of spades. It's like Duke's gonna defend the big one here, Ace Four, and he does. King Queen Six Rainbow. Jeremy's got the best of it still. And Duke folds and shows him the Ace Four. So now here's the deal about folding and showing. Personally, I've done that, and now I will not do that again. And I'll, and I'll tell you why, yeah. and I'll tell you why. I've done, I used to do that a lot, right? Like, okay, I'm giving you respect and fullness, but I don't want people to know when that I'm giving them respect. That you're capable of folding big hands? Exactly, I don't want people to think that they can just bet me off an ace every time if I don't have like ace king with it, you know, if I don't have ace with a king kicker, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I honestly want, I, I, if I'm folding that, I don't want to, you know, I don't want them to even know that, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I, I prefer people not to know that I'm capable of making, you know, lay down. Yeah, either g good or bad lay downs. I mean, like, I don't, either way, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know that. Because, and, and, and everybody's had this aspect where you show them, like, hey, man, I'm going to lay down this jack to you, right? And then they just show you something, like, absolute bluff. Or, likewise, on the flip side, I've been betting on an absolute bluff, and somebody shows me top pair and then folds, and all I'm thinking is... <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't want to do that. Anymore. Wow, what a good lay down. Yeah, how you can yeah. lay there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wizard. And of course, what am I going to say? I look at him and say, "Good lay down." <laughs> even though I totally, even though they have me crushed. Jerry made it 120 under the gun. I love this. So it's a twenty dollar straddle. Duke completes a small blind. And Jeremy says, get off my pot. <laughs> get off my pot. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is so sick. Dude, J J J I, I love Jeremy's play, man. Jeremy just like, he's like, dude, I'll do what I want. It really does not matter what cards you give me. Like, bring it. You know what I mean? We're not going to be bored. No, I love it. Uh, not at all. Oh, no. JFK is taking notes on my strategy. See, now I got to flip the script. Now I got to flip the script. See, and, and like A-Corp said, hey, uh, you know, you should totally show every time. And and he's just telling me that because they like to needle me and they like to just like tell me bad advice. So whatever Gay Corp's ever tells you, do the opposite every time. Because I know that he knows that, mm -hmm, he, mm -hmm. that he knows that we it's know. so many levels. All right, looks like Matt's gonna pop it up, make it 60 bucks. Peter's out of there. Over to one of our favorites here, Jeremy, with seven five. No fear, it's just like, yep, bring it, I'm in. Brian, who had originally put in the straddle, he's in the call as well. Right on. All right, so three players going to the flop. Deuce, eight, queen, rainbow. Wow, the best hand here with Brian with ace high. Matt's three to a straight flush. Yeah, that's, that's worth a that's that, worth a bet. I was gonna say that's not gonna stop these guys from betting at all. Thank you, man. 
Take it down. Nine high. Uh, Gate Corps, uh, what do you want? Minerys and the Massive Rapes, referring to Jeremy's, uh, making the, you know, 120 to go. The thing that you kind of get into touchy, touch and go kind of territory there is Jeremy's stack size, and he can reshove on you a lot. The other thing is that you're going to be out of position on, for the rest of the hand, and when you min raise, you're pricing your opponent in so well, you're giving them, you know, three to one, three to one to call. And if we, when you just click back there, he's not folding anything. And now you're just kind of inflating a pot that you're going to be playing out of position in a hand where it's really going to be hard for you to rep a lot of stuff, you know, and outplay your opponent, not just because you're out of position, but because when you had just completed before and they click back, there's not a whole lot you can have there. I mean, you're not, cause you, most players aren't you know, generally going to be doing that with, you know, big with big hands, ace, king, ace, queen, even, you know, ace, jack suited in that, in that type. Just because they're just, they're just going to open, because they can't count on their opponent. Unless you, you know, there's a pattern where you know your opponent is always going to be doing that and just be making these huge opens over limps. Uh, but I think so. It, once when you just complete there and your opponent makes a big raise, it clicking back there out of position is is a recipe for disaster. In position, different story. Then you got a couple of things, and then you said now you're building the pot when you're in position. I don't know. Gay Corpse agrees with you, so I'm going to have to disagree. And I'm plus, disagree. and plus, then at that point, then. You can, as we know, a lot of players, you know, that like to, you know, do the limp re-raise thing. Because then, at that point, you that's exactly what you do. You've limped and re-raise. Now your hand looks more like you're, you know, playing aces and king, aces or kings exactly. really, really bad. And you hate that move. You and I do, but, but it, it, it turns, your hand kind of face up. But that's what it looks like. Versus yeah, when just, you just complete the small blind or something like that. Yeah. It really is hard for a player to have that. It really got to be ambitious and... Yeah, I totally agree with you. And Disjunctive here uh, asks, uh, what's the max buy-in? Yeah, it's table stakes, so you definitely can buy in at the largest stack, which uh, a lot of people choose to do or get uh, dang close to it. Yeah, so sure. when this game starts, it is a 5K max buy-in. Um, so right now, any of these players can buy in up to 5K, and then after that, it is table stakes. So I think right now the biggest stack is uh, Anthony. He's got about 3K in front of him. So yeah, right now, anyone can buy in up to 5K right the now. The Tower of Green. <laughs> I love me, Corpse. <laughs> of course you love him. He's one of the few players who agrees with you, Jake. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, I'm like seeking out like a... Uh, I'm, a, a draw, I'm drawn to a praise. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that? You like that? Good Jake. Oh. You're such a good Jake. Thanks. <laughs> you, start, you start scratching your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the real trouble you do that. I mean, not, not trying to give away too much, but I mean, I found myself in the spots where, like, say, if you know, someone had just completed there, and then you make an open, and then they come back on the top, and like, you're like, what, like, really, what do they really have? Like, what's their, their best hand? Like, five, pocket five is if they, I mean, that's yeah. like their best hand there. Ace, ace four, ace three, you know, because they have an ace blocker, and so then at, at that point, you know, with, with, with Jeremy Stack says he can rip a lot of hands. He can just come back on the top and shove eleven 1, hundred. On with a lot of a honestly, lot of cards. I've already seen Jeremy pretty much rip anything he freaking wants to, and I, I love it. Yeah. He's just like, dude, I don't care what I have. I'm playing position. I'm playing the player. Literally, the cards are almost non-existent for him at this point. But you know, it, but he's doing it. He's doing it in a way that that's still like been calculatingly you know, crazy. Yeah, there's, there's a method exactly, to exactly. It's not. I mean, you can't just. I mean, some players would watch him and be like, okay, well, I could just play whatever I want. But the thing is, he's also able to get away from hands. Yeah. And that's what and that's what matters too. He might get splashy and he might you know take 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 down pots, but he's also able to fold when he needs to get the hell out of the way. And they, his nuts are going to get paid off. I mean, when, when when his nutted hands when he gets there, it's not like you know um, someone's just sitting there and, and check folding all night long, and then suddenly he puts in a, a huge raise, and then where they only get paid off in coolers. All right, looks like Peter's going to come in here and make the call, and uh, Brian as well. So Peter's going to call with sevens. Brian's 6-3 uh, suited. going to make the call. Anthony's gone. RD on the button here. He's out of there. Danny is definitely going to make the call. All right. Tom, we've got a nice little five-way pod here. 100 bucks in there. Let's see what happens. Boom. Nine, queen, four, two spades. Danny's had a gut shot, a backdoor spade draw. Peter just seems to have the only pair. Tom's got the mystery hand. Boom, look at that. Eight on the turn. 
Brian's gonna pick up a heart draw here on the turn, and no one's shown any strength so far in this hand. So Brian's got some, you know, reasonable equity. He also has position here. Matt has kind of a funky gutter ball straight draw that he needs Peter's seven to complete. Uh, Brian's gonna let it check through. Oh, and there it starts. is. Look at that. Runner, runner, six high flush for Brian. $100 pot, pretty small here, checks around. <laughs> Probably gonna get checked to him. Brian's gonna laugh. And Brian's thinking, hey man, I almost hope, and Brian's actually in a really cool, he's got position in this pot. He actually has the best hand by a mile. And it looks like a, a cool little buy a bet. And if he bets this right here, what did he bet? It's like 60. Hopefully somebody Getting looks no him up just to buy a bet. I mean, that's it's rough because nobody's got anything. The only possible contender is Peter, and he's not he's not buying it, so. No love. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I was kind of laughing at that too. His nuts will get paid. <laughs> 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 I heard that, I'm like, oh, yeah, what is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. And Anthony and Brian and Matt here in the top three here with Duke in fourth. Have you, uh,. Have you tried any of the new the new items on the menus? I have not. What new items? I was not aware. Oh, dude, the we got the lamb chops. Oh, is that? Yeah, I saw you post about that the other night. The lamb chops were they uh, like uh, dude, amazing. Dude, they're, they they're amazing. Are. The lamb chops, like everyone you know, raves about, you know, the, the duck tacos. It's kind of like you know, everyone's kind of like favorite thing on the menu yeah, here, yeah. you know, or one of the many favorite things. You know, that or is that's the lamb, is the lamb chops a contender? Dude, I'm telling wow. you, lamb chops are real. Lamb chops are real. Come with some Brussels sprouts and this like 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 roasted like red pepper sauce. Oh man. He says try the empanadas. We have empanadas here. So now they have empanadas. There's so many delicious things I don't even know about. Oh dude, no, it's good stuff. It's all good. Here we go. Three players. And over to Duke. Three players here. Boom. Ace, seven, eight, two clubs. We got a pair of eights for Duke over there. Chips on 11, yeah, I kind of want to try one of those empanadas. Because, I mean, I, I, I like I like bad, crappy empanadas. So if it's like a really good empanada, I'm sure it'd be amazing. I've heard they're good empanadas. Yeah. And he says they're fat and fat trained. So, you know, it naturally goes together. And uh, Duke is going to turn two pair, uh, show it, and it was the winner anyways all day. So it's Iron Afraid of No Clubs. Yeah, I love it. 80, K Cruz is 86 the Lamb Chops. What are you, nuts? Oh, they sold out already. What? No, there's got to be more. There's always more lamb. There's always more lamb. Silence of the lambs. So, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward. So, that new menus all together. I'll just go check out a new menu and it should have it all yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, it's matted items. Good stuff, man. Rad. The lamb chops. I'm telling you, the lamb chops. Rad. And so. for those of you who haven't been here before locally, I know we have a, a couple first time uh, guys tuning in. Uh, there's always a player's menu here in the poker room side. There's two sides, two stones here. And in the poker room side, there's always a player's menu. Uh, as long as you're playing or on the list for a game, they always take care of you, man. Really great food at really great prices uh, and drinks as well. It's always happy hour prices regardless, so good times. And uh, it is Wine Wednesday, yes? Ah, it's always Wine Wednesday. Uh, and Veronica's at home barreling. <laughs> <Mom> <laughs> yeah. Veronica's barreling uh, at home wine. Wine Wednesday. She calls it mom juice. It's really fantastic. I dropped on the one. Oh, okay. We haven't had her in the chat yet tonight. I know. She might have crossed I that. Figured, she might have crossed that threshold. Oh, uh, like, she went too far. At some point, you like, you know, I just forget how to use the laptop. She's know. gone too far. She's yeah. gone too far. Oh, Veronica's got her parents in town, and I will tell you this: uh, from all the Snapchats we've seen, Veronica's parents are hilarious. They're authentically, <laughs> extremely thick Polish accents who say everything normal in very, very, very funny ways, um, and do very funny things and. It's just hilarious. They seem like awesome and genuinely funny, like, great people. All the uh, with all the, uh, as much as she like talked talked them up and was like, oh, my parents say this and they do that. You know, she she built them up quite a bit. Yeah. And which is even sets you for a big letdown. But from no, no, no dude, they yeah. they live up to every bit of it. It's hilarious. I mean, she's literally driving in her car and she goes on and on about how uh, you know you can get more money for recycling back in Canada where they're currently living. And then she pans the camera up and you can see just bags of recyclables that her parents are collecting to take back to another country so they can get an extra couple pennies a can. And I just, how can you not love that? I mean, you can't make that up, guys. You can't make that up. They're, you talk about positive EV, that's them all day. Let's just take this whole minivan full of like bottles and cans back. Yeah, and that's an additional it. $11. Guys, you don't wrong. even know. It's huge. We paid for our lunch. 
All right, here. So Anthony with pair tens and uh, Tom here, king queen. Uh, Spike's a queen. Anthony's also got a straight draw as well. A jack or ten would be super monster for Anthony here. Now, as you're looking at the outs, you may wonder what isn't there two tens? Our outs are actually calculated. Uh, we put our burn pile on a sensor as well, so we know if a ten has been mucked uh, or a jack has been mucked. So or burned. Yeah, or burned. Yeah. So. So two jacks were dead, and uh, one of the tens was dead. That's why he was only really drawing the three outs. But Tom raises there with top pair on queen nine eight two diamonds. There's a lot of straight draw and or you know one one pair straight draw or under one pair back back or you know diamond draw combos that Tom can get value out of. So normally in a lot of spots where I don't. I'm not a huge fan of just raising just top pair on most flops. That's it's one of the, one of the few flops I think you can raise with raise with one pair and get called by worse hands. So Tom's not playing you know a whole lot of hands, but when he is when he is playing them, he's doing all right, making making a little bit of money. Uh, Kate Corpse has his Valerie alive. Valerie's still uh, grinding at the series. Yeah, yeah. Should have her back in a few weeks. Exactly. Yeah, she went out there. She was on a stand. But it's really great, honestly, because a lot of us have went out there at one point or another, and uh, we all ended up hanging out with Val, catching a meal, catching a drink. It's like, oh, hey, it's like a horrible way from home. What's going on? I think I forgot what she looked like. Yeah, I know. I don't even know anymore. Who's Val? The Va Val, Valerie. I don't know. I'll talk now so they can Boom, 775. Yeah. No help to anybody. Matt here with Ace Jack High, still the best. And, uh, yeah. We're still in this hand. We're catching up. Maybe Bring that's up. not the case. And uh, we got no, our go raise Jeremy. here. Jeremy. The wild card. Check raise. Oh, here we go. Jeremy with deuces. And uh, Matt with Ace Jack. Here we go. Boom, gone. Matt's out of there. Jeremy raising with the best. Deuces never loses. I love it. And Matt's just like swimming there because he's like, God, Ace Jack is, is good here so often. And yeah. I, just, I just can't because. Jeremy is also gonna have a lot of sevens there too. Like, Jeremy's like, everywhere. On man. seven, seven, five. Jeremy could have like queen seven there. Oh, in a heartbeat. Like he could have seven. And he wouldn't. Anything. And he wouldn't slow play it either. He no. would come right out with it. No, because you know what? Because you wouldn't expect that he had a seven, or you would. I mean, he's really the king of like good luck putting me on a hand. Good luck putting me in a range where you think I might be. Because yeah, I'm not. I'm never in that range ever. It's so funny, like he said, you know, Matt there with the ace jack, and he said, and I, said I, I know Matt, I know he's thinking, you know, like, oh God, ace jack just is is good here in the spot so often. Um, I remember there was a hand back, he was going back several streams ago, um, and I had expected that that the he must have had some sort of technical error with Matt's cards because it looked like, you know, I think Matt had like, I want to say it was a nine or ten high, and it looked like he was like on the river, like mulling a call. And I said, well, the graph has got to be off. There's no way Matt's like, you know, I think I there. remember that. Yeah. Of, I talked about about the hand. And just no, and he was like, well, you know, the, the way the hand played out is like, no, like, because this guy's going to have, you know, this, you know, busted, you know, straight combos here a lot of times too. And if that's the case, then he's going to have worse, actually. And so sometimes, you know, nine high is actually going to be good here a lot of times. Yeah. And I was mean, like, that's just like so. So just, sick. He's like, he's so not, sick. he's not he even actually, Hollywood posturing. He's, he's really, really thinking about it. You know what what I mean? Can I call down here, like, with, like, I, I do have a, a card bigger than an eight. Yeah, it's that's true. It's hard to have all. That's it, you know. All right, guys. So uh, onto this board here, we got five, five deuce. We got Brian with a pair of deuces. Danny with fours. Not a bad flop for either of them here. Jack on the turn helps nobody. Danny's still with the best. But I think Danny knows. Hey, man, I don't think Brian has a five here. And I think Danny's gonna check down for value here. Check, Jack. Yeah. Check down for a little showdown. Uh, so yeah, this Sunday, uh, Western Senior Poker Series back here at Stones. Uh, we will be streaming the final table um, sometime Sunday evening. Like I said, it's a one-day tournament, so it's not that we can schedule in you know the day two. We know it's going to start. You know, we'll start the final table at a certain time. So the final table should start though sometime between seven to nine p.m. Uh, Sunday evening. Uh, make sure you subscribe that way you can get notified when we go live. 
and uh, cash and final table tournament poker. Now, we had the Western Senior Poker Tour here one time before? Yeah, once before. Gotcha. Yeah. And then that, when we did the final table for that, though, it was the following day on, on the Monday, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. I figured you would know. Come on, no we uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and this is why I drink. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why Daddy hits the bottle when he gets home. Sorry, kids. It's not you. It's not Mom. Yeah. It's this co-commentator <laughs> and every single person in the chat room. <laughs> Oh man. Jeremy's gonna open up the button. Makes it 105 to go with 10 for a diamonds. I love it. Ba -da, ba -da, Jeremy, can I just? Okay, yeah, I'm loving it for sure. Can I just tag Jeremy as like hashtag No Fear? Like, just like, does not care, totally fearless, doesn't matter. All right, Danny, here's your chance. No, you give me two deep, I do it. Come on. Yeah, two deep. How about we all give you 20 bucks to leave? No. Okay, give me. <laughs> oh, 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 did you hear that? Yeah, I think Danny's playing too tight this. And like, how about we all give you 20 bucks to leave? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You want me to go? I leave. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and I love this Jeremy trying to like Jeremy's hilarious because Jeremy to pull came, So Jeremy is the exact opposite of Danny, right? He's polar opposite. Danny's like a super tight like rock player and Jeremy's like, dude, you need two cards, I'm re-raising, I'm free betting, you know, it does not matter. Oh I love it. <laughs> Jeremy's Jeremy's funding Trying to get everyone to pitch in 20 bucks. <laughs> I've never seen Danny that. I've never game. seen that. You talk about positive EV. Dude, just go away and play a different game. You can make like 80 bucks, 100 bucks right now. Like, without even bringing a sweat. Uh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so oh, man. And of course, Danny wakes up with Ace King Hearts. He's like, all right, I'll show you all play a hand. Bring it. Lamped. I, remember, I saw once, uh, I've heard of it several times, players pulling together to keep to keep players in the, in, oh, yeah. in the game. Yeah. I've, seen, um, it was I've on, never on seen a pull season, together to kick a player out. Season one of High Stakes Poker, every player gave Phil Helm you $1,000. You know, so he's picking up eight grand just to stay, to stay in the game. So then he picks the 8K, reloads for like another 50, and burns it all off. <laughs> so it's like, every player's like, this is plus EV. I love it. Angry Polak, welcome. We were just talking oh, about you. Yeah. We, thought, we thought you might have had too much boxed mom juice and uh, might have forgot how to work a laptop. We weren't sure. But welcome, always a pleasure to have you here. This is a fun, look at these hands right here. Ace King suited, pocket fours, ace 10, pocket threes, and five three. Why do I like Brian's hand here? Why do I think his five three is just gonna monster crush everybody? That's a very Brian hand. And you know what's gonna flop like four deuce ace right here? It's just gonna be so nasty. Ghost of M, what's going on? All right, let's see. I can't wait for this flop. This flop could be nasty right here. Deuce eight eight. Gosh, that like bricked everybody. Really bad. Duck still, Duke here with the best hand with pocket fours. We were talking about your parents, Angry Polak, and how much they lived up to all of the hype. The board now double pairs. And Danny is going to value bet his ace high. I don't think Duke's in the mood to fold. Duke is not. Duke's going to make the call. Which is going to make it really tough for Jeremy to overcall this. Yeah, how do you Even though threes three? are going to yeah. be good there, you know, very frequently too. Peter Peter's calling thinking, for chops. Yeah, Peter's thinking, hey, hey, ace high. Oh, he's gonna oh, raise it raise. up! There we go. Look There's a nice move. Peter. I really, I would say, I really wouldn't have been in love with Peter. Peter's bringing out the hammer, which Peter is a flat there. there. Yeah, yeah flatting yeah. out. I think what it's doing because you're just calling for a chop. But now Peter making this really big raise here. So what's interesting about it is Peter was the original aggressor pre-flop. Is he made it 65 to go over a couple limbs and everyone came along. And what Duke, hands is yeah. Peter checking back the flop with, and then raising the raising the turn? Look at that, getting Duke off the best. Peter taking it down. No, you're right. I uh, I would not have liked a. Oh, and he shows. He shows both. He looks and then shows both anyways. 
So now Duke knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that he did fold the better hand. Yeah. Peter. Super Beast. <laughs> Liquid Asian says the guy on the left looks like a beer pong champion. Now is that my left or or I mean which which left? Because like you're on my left, but I think from the viewer's perspective, I'm on the left, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You're a beer pong so champion. So I look like a beer pong champion. Yeah, that's good. Is it? The, it's supposed to be the beard. It's gotta be the beard. The beard. Right? Yeah. Sure. How are the beard oils going, by the way? Keeping it nice and fresh? And oh, I got. had to order some more beard oil. It hasn't arrived yet. I, I dumped that whole entire bottle in my backpack like two weeks ago. And I, <laughs> oh, I dumped it in your backpack. You know you use an entire bottle every time you oil up your beard. Calm down. <laughs> Relax yourself. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Liquid Asian. Liquid Asian. I, like, I respect that name. I'll take it. Probably an old white guy. <laughs> exactly. He's like, yeah, not at all. That is pretty funny. I've never seen players uh, try to pay to make a player leave the game. That's that's funny. Yeah, and no one goes the other, the other, the other way where like someone goes to rack up like no 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 just stay. We're fine. We'll pay for another hour for you. We'll take care of that time break. Mustache seven oh seven. Tom Selleck. Oh, I thought I said mustache. Boom, King Jack Deuce. So a pair of kings for Tom here, a pair of jacks for Danny, and a deuce for Jeremy. 6 of clubs on the turn here. So it looks like, uh, what, it's just heads up between Jeremy and Anthony here, We're catching up with the action tracker. And Jeremy's gonna fire, what, 100? And Anthony's gonna look him up with a mystery hand. I'm assuming he could probably beat Deuces. And he can. Shows it down. So Liquid Agent says that he's fully Asian. You know, here's the thing about that though. It's I feel like he's watching a poker stream, which means he's a poker player probably. Okay. And poker players, poker players block. And oh so wow! You I think just, he's he's I doing am, the online keyboard commando block? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, I'd be basically, I'd be if I if I totally, you know, said I totally believe you, I'd I'd be calling him a nit. You know, saying, oh, he never bluffs. So I mean, I, I, I so like clearly not choose a wine in front of me. That's it. You know? That's so it. That's it. That's so it. I mean, I think he's got some bluffs there. I mean, you have oh, chosen wisely. <laughs> oh my god, that was on. Uh, no, it wasn't on TV. Uh, I should. I had my kids watch, or I let my kids watch a movie the, the other day. I don't know. It's kind of on the on the borderline when I, they were old enough to watch Indiana, Indiana Jones? Jones. Oh man, I think you're always old enough to watch Indiana Jones. Right. That's kind of yeah. my feeling. Yeah. About it. So no, yeah, I'm, let them okay watch it. That. Indiana Jones, a family classic. I don't care what age you are. Yeah. Fun fact, actually, the scene in the very first one where the guy's out there with all the crazy whip moves or whatever, and he just whips out his gun and shoots him and walks off set. Improv, right? Yeah, super improv. He actually really felt ill and just had to go to the bathroom. And there was this whole fight scene choreographed, and he just did that for fun, and they kept it in the movie because they thought it was just perfect. Wow. Yeah. Totally improv. Wonderful. Don't ask me why I know facts like that. I just do. It's important. It's true. It matters. Like on my tombstone, it will say "useless trivia champion." <laughs> yeah, I let him. I uh, say, so yeah, I let him watch. I let him watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then we skip Temple of Doom because Temple of Doom is just weird. It is. Um, Kalima. Yeah. Right. And then we so then we watch Temple of Doom, then we or no, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and we watch uh, Glass Crusade, which is my personal favorite. Yeah. But you left out the Crystal Skull because that one doesn't really count. That also doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah, it's not. It's not real life. For me, it's like also like like my kids like watch when they watch Star Wars. They 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 include the prequels as you know, Star Wars, and to yeah. me that's not Star Wars. I mean, it's Star Wars, but it's not Star Wars. Apparently, so. Veronica said everybody knows that except Jake. Apparently, about my I don't know if Shut she's up, needling baby. you or she's being serious. It's probably that mom juice, man. Can't trust it. Telling you. All right, action over to Peter here. Speaking of which, one of Veronica's favorites. A couple of mystery cards, and uh, looks like he's gonna come in for a raise, make it 80 bucks. And did I see? Oh, I lied. 105. 105, yeah. 105, yeah. Jeremy with a 10-6 again. Jeremy, the epitome of no fear. Duke. Oh, nice. Liquid Asian actually uh, plays in Vancouver, British Columbia. Very cool. Dukes can make the call. All right, three players going to the flop. Limp call 105. Yeah, that'll put, that's a nice sizable pot here. 
Yeah, now there are no bluffs in, Veron in Veronica's like, range for, for her name. Angry yeah. Polak, she is an angry Polak. It's true. Boom, 10 3 6, two spades. Jeremy! Top two, Jeremy! <laughs> what a beast! Oh, I love it. And he's, and he's gonna bet it. No hesitation. Oh man, I love it. And who's gonna be like, okay, well, Jeremy totally has 10 6. Like, I mean, I know you can put him on a lot of things, but you can't put him on top two here, you know? Especially calling the race. I mean, maybe if he initially raised, right, but necessarily calling the race, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, players, you know, they'll, they'll open pot or bluff, you know, with, with yeah. a lot of stuff, but flatting a hand with like, like 10 6 oftentimes, a lot of players just yeah. don't have. Players don't have the stones to do that. Yeah, you know? the stones, pun intended. So I'll tell you what, so it's funny, because he fired out, he was really hoping that Peter had a strong hand, and he doesn't show, no hesitation, just oh, instant pull. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, even though I, I can see the heart, if I'm Peter there with Ares King, I'm probably peeling, like, just like we talked about earlier, I'm, if I'm Peter, I'm probably thinking like, God, Ace King's good here so many times. Yeah, yeah. And I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably calling just to see one more card, and see, I mean, I'm probably calling to, to, to fold to another bet, but if it goes check check, I'm probably intending to probably check Hall River. And if I'm if I'm Jeremy there, I might have just checked him because he had position on Peter. I might have checked once and Peter was the original razor, just to let Peter peel anything. And at least even if he doesn't spike an ace or a king, at least there. yeah, give him a give chance him to fire out. Give him a chance to, to lay his own price there. You know so, what I mean? I mean that's a, I think that's a fairly standard way to, to to play that hand for most players. The only thing about Jeremy is Jeremy's playing so many hands and and trying to pick up so many uncontested pots that if you know, if he's just fire, 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 if he suddenly is then checking, and then like, so then, it, it then, just, and, then, and, then rate, too. and then, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna put off, you know, well, alarm it's rough, man. I mean, it's, his spot's like, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. He's like, if you check, you think I'm strong. If I bet, maybe yeah. you still think I'm strong. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I do here. I think, Jer I think Jeremy's best way to uh, to get paid there was was to bet it and hopefully that someone yeah, someone I mean, gets sticky. The pot was at the pot was at three thirty, maybe and he bet like two fifty. Maybe if he would have bet a little less, maybe he'd have bet like a buck fifty, bucks yeah, seventy five, something like that. Uh, revisit her sizing there. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, then then Peter could have peeled one off, you know. Gay Corp, so V Cross is actually doing live reporting out there for the World Series of Poker and she'll be back with us here in a few weeks. I'm assuming that she has not already become like a professional Pokemon Go player or whatever. She's a professional Pokemon Go player. And dude, I see, yeah. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Well, no, I mean, I just, you know what? People are basically gonna give like big, big establishments, big casinos, are just gonna give Nintendo, like, hey, here's a couple million bucks. Just put some rare Pokemon in the middle of my gaming floor. Right. You know what I mean? Why would you not? It's like genius. Just create traffic. It's so dumb and so smart all at the same time. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. All right, here, look at this board. Ace is still the best here for Jeremy. Ace is in threes for Jeremy. Matt, no pair. And he's gonna go for it. And he's gonna go big. Eh, kinda big. 685 in the pot. And you know, the thing is, Matt might be able to blow Jeremy off just a random ace, no kicker, but not with two pair here. Jeremy's gonna instantly make the call. Matt smiles, it was like, yep. <laughs> Look at that. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Jeremy for Prez. Bigger Ultra, what's going on? Not he talks place. about maybe catching a possible Pokemon here at Stones. Oh, I thought I thought he, he misspelled Ginger. Uh, either way, either way, you can catch a red-haired Ginger here. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. All right, looks like Anthony and Jeremy here are still on the big stacks. Matt. Pay for effort, Matt. Yeah, no, I respect it. And you know, the funny thing is, like, the second he got snap called, I love Matt's just big old smile on his face, like, yeah, I got caught with my hand in the cookie jar. I was just kidding. I didn't Matt mean with it. a 10 deuce off out of the small blind. All right, 50 call over here to Brian, uh, and he's gonna make it, looks like, uh, what was that, buck 40? Buck 45? 145. Yeah. Jeremy put in a $50 straddle, did he open to 50? I got a feeling for Brian to make it 145, that had to be a $50 straddle. I think Brian, or I think of Jeremy, even as, even as many hands as Jeremy's been playing, if Jeremy had opened a 50 under the gun, I think Brian's just flatting there, but against two random cards in the straddle, I love how Jeremy just insta calls with no thoughts with 810. And flops top and pair. And flops top pair. Like, like yeah, 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 I'm good. 
So Jeremy, this will be interesting. So pots of 300. Jeremy Flat called Brian's solid re-raise here. And uh, he checks it over to Brian. Brian's going to bet, uh, ooh, solid, like 210, something like that. Yeah. 210. And Jeremy's going nowhere. Not at all. Let's That's see. a raise. Ooh, it is. I see a couple of whites there. They were white chips. Three, is it 310? No. And we oh, saw wow. we saw Brian, Brian get sticky oh. earlier with those eights and just call Jeremy down. Yeah. Even after he check raised the turn, we're seeing another aggressive action here. Wow, uh, <laughs> Jeremy, how do you run so good? Now, Top two for Jeremy it here, does but complete it does complete a, a flush draw. Does complete a flush draw. Brian does have a heart. So he's and got also redraw. It does connect a straight out there. That actually gives, look at that, that ups his outs to seven right here for, for Brian. So even if he's ready to just get crafty and represent, so he checks over to Brian. Brian checks. Look at this. Watch this. Oh, wow. Stone Cold Nutskies with 810 for Jeremy. When you're hot, you're hot, man. K Corp is going to be mad that I said Nutskies. 1100 in the pot. And he jams. Overbet shoves. It seems like such a crazy overbet, too. Here's what I love, what I like about it is it's the only way I think that Jeremy keeps bluffs in his range from Brian's perspective. If With a 1100 pot, if he would bet like 500 there, it's, 400, it seems he's like a, no it's, he's begging the call. Yeah, he's, he's begging he for your call. Yeah. By making that huge oversized rip there, yeah, he never, like, it's the only way that Brian could actually ever justify, you know, if, if Brian had a hand like ace eight, there, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, where you ever just justify a call? I, I don't, and yeah. I feel like basically Jeremy right there by jamming on the river was representing like a. This is the only way I can win this pot type bet. I yeah. have to jam. Yeah, it's, it's the only way. I hope you don't call, which was great because it's he had the, the absolute. Only way he keeps nuts. bluffs in his range. Yeah. No, I, I, I like it. I like it. Jeremy for Prez. Jeremy spoke. <laughs> yeah. Girl. Uh, Gate Corp says, aren't those almost always for value? Um, Overbet shoving rivers has gotten popular to do with value hands, yes. Um, but still, I think you'll find the majority of, of most poker players will still size their bets to try to get called. I mean, this, I mean, after all, this game is a game about extracting value and players think well we've got to buy jam here he's only got to, he's got to be super strong to call me but when you're playing against a thinking player who's gonna be you know who can can make big calls um or who can hear off and actually we just saw we saw brian earlier call down with pocket eights on queen queen four four or whatever yeah know, exactly was. yeah all right so it's not like brian's not incapable of calling down light mm -hmm. um against that type of player and brian is brian's a thinking player brian's capable of making big calls um I think that's the right move. I feel it is. Um, most players still are going to bet smaller there, hoping to get called with their nutted hands and, and get paid off. So it looks like Peter here with aces uh, is going to make it 160, gets two callers. Brian and Duke here going to the flop. 10, 3, queen, two clubs. And Peter does have the ace of clubs. Uh, actually, every player has one club. So this is going to give Duke a pair of 10s. Uh, action first here on Peter with aces. He is not going to mess around. Pots at almost 500. He's going to bet three. Uh, so Gate Corp thinks it's a good point. It's, it's long as, it's being, as long as you're being balanced. And that's the key. You can't do that with your nutted hands and then never do that with some of your bluffs as well. Yeah. So, so then, and, that, and, and that's the thing about there, where you're you know, being balanced, you're gonna keep your, your, your sizing with your bluffs and your nut and your value hands close to the same. It keeps that, you know, your opponent trying to, you know, guessing, you know, during the hand yeah. as much as possible where, you know, hey, if there's 1100 in the pot and he bets 600 with a bluff, and but he also is going to bet you know you know six seven hundred with, with his value hands, then you're you're mentally kind of you know, flipping a coin as to whether or not okay did he, is, you know, is there a busted draw there that you know he could have, or is he is he just nutted the whole way here? Like I said, as long as you're you're, you're being balanced, you know it, you're going to overshove some of your your bluff hands as well. Then you know overshoving your nut hands works as well. Here's the thing about that is the common logic most players is when they're bluffing well. 
if he ha if he doesn't have a hand strong enough to call, betting six or seven hundred here is going to be just as effective as shoving. So then they don't, and that's I mean the problem where like like Gate Corpse points out is that ninety percent of the time that those overbet shoves are value hands is that players don't balance themselves. Yeah, yeah. Is that they don't overbet shove their bluffs, and so they can. They will make their bluffs, you know, will have more, you know, smaller sizing because they're risking less. And hey, if the guy can't call, he can't call. You know, if he's nutty, he's going to snap me no matter what. Exactly. You know, but if he, if he can't call off here, he can't call off. And so they'll bet smaller with the bluffs and then, like I said, overbet jam with their value hands. And that's, and that's where, like, Gate Corp Corpse says that, hey, most of the time that he sees that, it's for value. And I, I, would, I would tend to agree. Well, this comes back to, I mean, it's all about, like, you know, switching gears, right? I mean, you always yeah. have to be ready to just do the exact opposite with the exact same hands. <laughs> I mean, you know? Yeah, do the exact opposite with the exact same hands. That's perfect. So, uh, open ended here for Brian. Uh, and uh, we've got King High here for Anthony. I don't think we're going to see much going into this pot here. Straight off the bat, Brian's going to fire 45, and Anthony's like, yeah, bye. There's no money in this pot. There's no reason to chase you. Heads up. We're not involved. Uh, one of the players I think we, we uh, had on the stream uh, a few weeks ago, um, I want to say that you and I were doing the commentary together then, too. Um, we had a Dalton in the game. Yeah. And he had those two really big shoves. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a classic example. There's a player who is very balanced in his over aggression over bet shoves there. I mean, we saw him yeah. check, shove, and what was like like ten high or ace ace high in, in another hand. Mind you, the, the second time, unfortunately, he ran into, he ran into the nuts. Um, but uh, there's a player, you know, right there that that can do it. And, he's, that well, knows and, and we were talking earlier about like uh, you know sometimes you get stuck in those situations where you're on one end of the spectrum or the other. Yeah. You're either completely you have nothing, right, or you have an absolute monster, <laughs> and that's kind of what that whole shoving with both sides of it does, right? Yeah. And when he shoves, I'm just like, look, now I feel like regardless of the way the hand played out, it's like a 50-50 coin flip on you have absolutely nothing and a super busted draw, or you just have like quads. Yeah. Like I mean, I you know, I'm, and I just have to figure that out right now. So give me a minute, <laughs> you know. I saw I saw a great tweet. Uh, this week during a, I think it was leading up to the main, um, when one of the prelim events, a player, uh, former former local player, now he moved over to New Jersey, uh, to like, so he can play star, uh, Sean Daniels, and uh, he uh, said why? <laughs> he said why is it when it's always you know, quads or nothing they always have quads? Yeah, <laughs> I know. He's like, ah! <laughs> like, he's probably got nothing. I just kidding. He has quads. It's either, yeah, it's either quads or nothing. It's, it's so hard to make quads, so I call. I have quads. Damn it. Mm -hmm. You know. Puck 66. Hello, buddy. Welcome to the chat. And action over to Jeremy, who flops the whether or not flush draw here. More than enough on the button here. Brian King High is going to check out. Peter with a mystery hand. Going to get out of there as well. I think, uh, not that Brian was going to make the call anyways, but I think uh, later when Brian's watching the stream, which I think he's probably pulling up right now on his phone. Um, he'll feel good about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll feel good. He's like, when he's when he pushed, he'll be like, I, and I think that's probably why he's pulling it up. I think he's like, man, I really want to see if he had it right there. And oh yeah, he had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had it. He had the unbeatable hand. The best you can do is chop. Oh, uh, V-Cross Poker, speak of the devil, in the chat box. Hey, what's going on? Only against me. Straight they from always, Vegas. They cool. always have quads. Cool Briz, triple seven, what's up? Yeah, V-Cross, everybody's been asking about you. They thought you might have died. We told them you didn't. You're still living, I swear. You still have a pulse. Sandy Goatee. Good peeps. Yeah, I, I have a knack for finding, finding someone with quads. Like, wow, I can, I can really sniff out some quads. Yeah, I can be... <laughs> There they are. I can yeah. always find them. All I gotta do is pay money, and I can find them. Every, I can find them every time. <laughs> hey, I found quads. It cost me a thousand bucks. Woo! But I knew it. it was, I knew yeah, it. Yeah. I knew it. I just wanted to prove I was right for a grand. Yeah. <laughs> it was worth it to me. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it happened. Look at all these hearts tied up here. Ten high hearts. Queen high hearts for Peter. Ace high hearts for Brian. And Jeremy, with the old Jack Five offer. Boom. Of course, there's no hearts out there. Nine jack for two diamonds. Jeremy uh, top, for Prez. Top pair for Jeremy, man. Just keep on trucking. Casually throws out 50. And uh, Peter here with a gutter, and he's gone. He says bye bye. Jeremy shows the jack. Says, I got top pair. I have it every time. Don't worry about it. 
And I love it. Let's see what Jeremy stacks at now. Because Jeremy, uh, he was, he had almost, even when he was still playing the same style, he was at like 600. Uh -oh, oh, and there is Spence. a god. So we got Spencer coming into the game. Yes. Look, Jeremy's up to almost 3k from his 600 right there. What a beast. The only guy who made a sweet run like that was Brian last week at the 1025 game, who was down to under 400 and came back, cast out 5k. Yeah. Yeah. Was what was a beast. Over 6k, and then, yeah. and, then he, and, a hand, and then poker happened. But. Yeah, and then poker. But he, I mean, he tripled up. He doubled up, doubled up, and I'm just like, is this real life? What's going on here? Yeah, V Cross, how's uh, how's Vegas treating you? Yeah, good times. I like that we got Spencer getting into the game. Spencer, again, for those of you guys who didn't know, um, ran super deep in the Casino Employees event, got, uh, I believe, fourth out of like 700 and something players. Yeah. Super deep. Very close to a bracelet. Very cool. Uh, Puck66 says that his poker coach is currently 14th. In day two C, nice. Solid. Yeah, I read. Uh, who was the chip leader going into day two? I think we had like 350k or 400k or something like that. That's gotta feel good. I didn't see what it was. I know um, the chip leader coming out of day one. Or, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a uh, nearly 400k. Or yeah, that's that's gotta feel great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being able to put people all in like it's nothing. Oh, Get abusive. Right here. <laughs> Oh, Blake Eastman. Oh, wow. Eastman's uh, 14th? Nice. Oh, God. Angry Polak. She's just trolling us from the chat. Is this live? Where is this? Because this is the question she gets every 10 minutes on the stream. Angry Polak. Boom. Jeremy. Good every time. Doesn't matter whether it's six high or whether it's the stone cold nuts. Good every time. Puck 66 is coaches uh, by Blake Eastman. For, uh, for those that want to learn a little something, something about poker, check out Blake Eastman stuff. Um, his YouTube channel is amazing. Uh, you can subscribe to it. What is it? It's, uh, uh, it's not, damn it. That's going to kill me now. I got to what Blake Eastman now. Yeah. His, um, he did, his live tell read stuff is phenomenal. Harlan in the house. You going to go hop in that game? This, that game's off the chain. Yeah, Har 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 we got Harlan here. What are you doing He's over here? To in that over there. He's waiting to hop in that game. Uh, Beyond Tells. Ah. His, yeah, his whole little thing on uh, non-verbal uh, poker stuff. Oh, it's nice. amazing. But his, Very cool. His uh, sc yeah, school of cards on YouTube. Um, Wizard. Uh, he actually runs a, a poker school, a brick and mortar, mortar poker school. So it's not oh, like nice. an online, I mean, he does online coaching, kind of stuff like that, but it's yeah. an app he actually has. You can go to, like, poker school. It's, like, Very way cool. cool. Mr. Matt. He's got school of cards, yeah, and beyond tells. He's got a wizard. All right, Danny here with pocket sixes. Um, and we're going to flop it five do seven. A whole lot of nada for most players here. Danny's still with the best with sixes. Spencer, it looks like he's just getting seated right about now. He had to sign our waiver, which includes uh, giving away your firstborn child and your bank account in the last four of your social. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the live tell read stuff that I that I use that I pick up, I pick up specifically from uh, that his Beyond Tell videos. Very cool. Oh yeah, guys. Very cool. I'll have to check it out. Does he get into a specific section about like people with beards and how to read them or? <laughs> Jason Handy always hides his beard when he has the monster. Back to this card game. Uh, speaking of this card game, Danny, who is being told he's not playing enough hands by some of the other players at the table, uh, is now picking up aces. The last time they tried to pay him to go away, he picks up ace king suited. Now he's got aces. He's just like, oh, I'll show you what's up. Yeah. And is that a forty-five dollar open? Race to two hundred. And the thing is, the problem is, if somebody like Jeremy raises to two hundred, he might get a call. But Danny's just such a rock that, like, if he re-raises to two hundred, it's kind of like, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, and like, so, I mean, there's, I mean, we just see a perfectly illustrated there where Jeremy's nuts are getting paid off because he's playing a lot of hands. And 
Danny, although you know, he, his style of poker is much, much less volatile, of course, mm -hmm. um, is going to have a little bit tougher time getting action when he picks up monsters. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Puck66 said, after taking Blake's class and talking to him, I love people with card protectors. Uh, if you want to expand on that a little bit, that'd be, that'd be cool. I kind of want to know Don't where you're going. Give with. away my game. Oh, the card protector thing. Oh, there, huh? dude, there's some real, there's some real stuff going on, with people. All right. People right. like hand movements, stuff like that. You, you wouldn't believe how much people give away with, with their hands. Oh yeah. During a poker game. Oh yeah. I think JFK is being uh, sarcastic. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> So Danny's gonna race to 30 here. Jeremy makes the call. Ace Jack Deuce Rainbow. Uh, Danny flops super top top. And uh, looks like Jeremy's gonna check it over to Danny. I think Jeremy wants to bust Danny. He ain't having it. No. He's not having it at all. Dude, Danny, man, it's like the second they uh, tell him to stop playing so tight, he picks up Ace King, Aces, Ace King. You know, even when JFK says no sarcasm, you guys rock. I feel that even saying no sarcasm has some sarcasm He's in it. He's gonna have some bluffs in his range. <laughs> He's got some bluffs in his range. <laughs> JFK is totally bluffing us. Uh. <laughs> okay, now I believe him. He's not bluffing. Mm. We did compare those two. It's true. Yeah, right. It's true. Yeah, man. All right, maybe, maybe, but yeah, maybe no. Dan, Danny and Jeremy are complete opposite ends of the spectrum type of players. Yeah. But it works for both of them. You know what I mean? Yep. Which is why poker is such a beautiful thing. Anthony makes it thirty to go under the gun, pocket fives. Spencer has found a home here in C five. Oh, that means we lost, uh, we lost Duke. Oh, Duke! You're my boy, Duke! I thought, about, I thought the same thing. Boom, all right. Queen, seven, deuce. Club draw here for Brian. Anthony, no five for him. Jeremy with the mystery hand. Uh, looks like, uh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Anthony, call your mother. He's gonna fire out with fives. We got an instamuck over there from Jeremy. And now it's on to Brian. Anthony can get value from flush draws. Also, if he, he can never get a seven to fold, that's a good thing for him as well. So now, brick Rip on the turn six. here. He's gonna check over. I think Anthony may or may not play this a little cautiously. Yeah, he's gonna check too. He's gonna do the arm check. Oh, super beast. Wow. Brian gets there. I think Brian's gonna fire and Anthony's just gonna run. Pots at 260. Let's see what Brian's gonna fire. Oh, buck, buck oh five maybe. Buck and Anthony can never call this just because not just because the clubs got there but also even if Brian was you know check calling light with a seven yeah. he, he already couldn't beat a yeah. seven now I mean definitely can't get him off try to get him off of a seven I was like the say the second you said that Anthony can never call this I was like great now Anthony's gonna call and it's your fault <laughs> it's your fault because you said he can never call and now he's gonna call I blame you Spencer welcome to the table buddy coming in there with 2k so we lost Duke, we lost Tom. Spencer there, he's gonna model the resident stone sweatshirt for us, yeah. and uh, as well as you. Very nice, comfy sweatshirt, guys. If, if, you're in, uh, if you're in the range here, come on in, get it. 25 bucks in your player's card, easy peasy. Play for 25 hours, get an awesomely free sweatshirt, which is hands down the most comfortable sweatshirt I own. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's nice. Mucho. It's nice. I mean, yeah. At my other job, I go in there and I'm like, hey, you know those crappy sweatshirts that you guys buy and put our logo on? You think you could buy this one? <laughs> and, put a, and put our logo on this one? And they're like, no, it's way too expensive. Of course it is. Yeah, Angry, Angry Pollock said, let's all move to Jamaica. Great food, great weather, great music, great greenery. So what, second highest murder rate per capita? That's irrelevant. Well, you know what? Puck 66 is going to stay in Oregon, and I do like the fact that we don't have any sort of tax. The first time I went to Oregon, I bought something for $9.99. I gave him a $10 and got a penny back. I was, like, mind blown. It's like, this is amazing. King Ding Son 1, welcome to the chat. Queen 10 for all hearts and the super, welcome to the table, there we go. So uh, actually we got super nutter draw here for Jeremy with the ace high of hearts. 
And Matt is no stranger to fighting against Jeremy here. And it looks like we got Matt check uh, calls with check a pair of tens. Check, check on the turn, and Jeremy gets there. No hero call from Matt. Jeremy bets out 300, and Matt instantly releases. Oh, uh, Puck 66 is don't worry, they make it up in real estate taxes. I'm sure they do. Oh, there's always a balance. You know, I know that for a while there actually uh, there was a lot of uh, people buying uh, from the Bay Area in California going up and buying real estate in Oregon because it was so cheap. And so for a minute there, there was a regular. A what? We're on a delay, no spoilers. I know, I know. Okay. It just came up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Already living through the pain. But they, but they went there and uh, <laughs> no Nutskis left behind. Damn you, gay corpse. No, but anyways, long story short, uh, up in Oregon, they slapped like a uh, little like crossed out like no California signs, like don't come up here and buy our real estate. So some random guy was going around slapping them on all like the for sale signs on the houses and stuff. Wow. That was pretty interesting. Anyways, again, more useless random trivia that I know. Don't ask me why. All right, guys, we've got some fun hands brewing here. Anthony's going to complete the small blind with queen, ten of clubs. I'm sure he would have loved to open there, but he also does not love to be out of position. Oh, look at this. Ace, Jack, Dewey. Danny hits a pair of aces, also has backdoor diamonds. Brian also spikes an ace. Brian with a better ace. RD with the mystery hand here. Anthony uh, got shot to Broadway, and three-way to the turn. Anthony, backdoor clubs, Broadway draw. There we go. <coughs> Yeah, V cross. Uh, uh, Tuck did play the main, and uh, as far as I know, he had uh, a decent amount of chips earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely made it to day two. He was playing today, so uh, go out there and say hi. Go out there and sweat him right there uh, at the table live. Aces and nines for Brian now. Danny still barreling a seven. And Brian. Two aces and aces and nines here. Two pair for Brian. He is not really going to be going anywhere here. Now, after Danny leads leads into that many players, generally he's going to be a lot stronger than ace seven here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Brian actually raise. And he sure does. Brian puts in a raise. Brian's also got position, so it's a great spot for Brian to be in. Makes so it 175. 175. So another uh, buck 20 for Danny to call. And uh, we'll see. It's not like it's a super crazy board here. But Danny only does have one pair, no kicker. Danny's a relatively snug player. I don't, I don't know. I think Danny's really on the fence here about calling them. Really hard for Danny to be ahead. Did Danny just jam? No, 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 no. no. I think I heard. I think I heard. Brian, did Brian say something like "I got you, Danny" or something like that? Oh, I don't know. I was trying to hear what Danny said. A oh, re-raise here would be sick. That would be super sick. I think it'd be suicide, but it'd be sick. It, it would be suicide, but it'd also be very sick. <laughs> no, I know. What are you going to do? Brian's like, hey, if you got ace jack or a set, otherwise, like, I'm, I'm taking it all day. That said, I, if Brian, or I'm sorry, if Danny did jam there, Brian would be in some absolute hell mentally trying to figure out, like, what could he beat then? Mm -hmm. I mean, because he, like, he would never do that with just a random, you know, ace king type hand. Mm -hmm. It, it, he's got to be H Jack Plus. Yeah. King Ding Sun One, welcome to the chat. We are actually located right outside of Sacramento, California here, um, right off Highway 80. Can't miss us. Good stuff. Giant sign. Great food. You can smell the duck tacos and lamb chops from a mile away. <laughs> Food's amazing. And uh, guys, Nightbot just posted a link to how you get a seat in one of these games. I've actually had several players hit me up on the side on how to get one of these games. Just contact us, and we will always point you in the right direction. We will make sure to get you a seat, get you on the list. Um, as you can see, we've already uh, we've already traded out several players from the table. So even if you're on the list, you definitely Tom's back. I thought we lost Tom. No, we didn't. We didn't lose Tom. Tom just took a breather, came back. He had a cocktail. He went out, he caught some Pokemon in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 Came back, you gotta catch them all, right? 
Do you have to throw in that plug? Mustache 707, good night. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, to answer your question, Puck, uh, yeah, the drop usually produces the same across the board. Um, one perk is, you know, this place does play no flop, no drop. Um, I, I, heard, I heard it makes a little bit smaller than places like LA. Actually. Oh, really? I heard it's just a little bit smaller, <laughs> well, like a dollar or two less, yeah. Um, well, the biggest thing, uh, like in a, like the, the, the two five or five five games that I played up in LA, um, or not the source of five ten, but the two, like, uh, at, at the Commerce, uh, is they, they drop no matter what. Yeah. So it's like you, you're paying so, a rate. So it's like you can't even, you, like, good luck chopping. Like, well, well, you there's, no, yeah. there's no chopping. No. They say, oh, you want to chop? Cool, just give me your money. So you lose. That guy's all right, but you lose. <laughs> just give me your money for the drop. Yeah, the no flop, no drop is uh, a, a super solid, nice perk, and that's the way I think it should be. So... <laughs> Kick orbs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Solid. Love our chat box. Yeah, we have a, a lot of fun regulars here in our chat room. Always good times. Danny is just a good hand magnet right now, waking up with nines against RD here in seat one, who actually just stopped by the booth and said hi. And Tom's gonna make the call too. So three players going to the flop. Queen, king, three, two diamonds. Danny still with the best as we can see here with nines. First to act. He checks it, Tom checks it. We see a turn, deuce of hearts, no help. Uh, Danny's gonna check again. I don't know, I might have put in a fire there if I was Danny, just see where I'm kinda at here. But Tom's gonna, looks like Tom's gonna take over that position for him here. Oh, there you go, an update for V-Cross on Tuckman, um, our other resident commentator here. Uh, he's a little bit short with 46k, a little under the initial buy-in of, uh, of the starting stack of 50k. But he's still in. The dream he's is still, still alive. Hey, you know what? If you're still in day two, you know, it feels good, right? Yeah. I mean, may, grinding through the days means you're still in it and you're doing good. JFK tells Valcross or V Cross to get back to work. Honestly, she's probably <laughs> running around. She's probably working and streaming. Stones like, come on, this is her home away from home. This is her home. So right. She's just she's streaming while she's playing. When me and her uh, met up, we had some just a beefy order of these things called trash can nachos, where they bring up these nachos that are in a tube and they pull it up and it's all just <laughs> stuck together with cheese. And uh, Damn. and we were watching you guys doing a broadcast. Uh, and right in the restaurant, and we just hooked up my Bluetooth speaker, and we just blared it. And we didn't even care who saw. We're like, hey guys, we're watching this poker stream here. We're at the Rio, so you really can't fault us. Right. You know, so this is what we're doing. Brian waking up with a hand, aces. I don't even know if that's allowed. Looks like he's gonna, he's, no, he's gonna raise it up here. Yeah. V Cross knows what I'm talking about. She's like, how hungry are you? I'm like, ah, I'm not too hungry. She's like, well, we'll just split some nachos. Me and her combined could not even come close to finishing those nachos. Yeah, I'm trying to envision like how that would even work. It's crazy. No, because they pour the cheese in it and it, it just sticks together. And then you're playing nacho Jenga. So, like. hand developing here. Jeremy originally opened to 35. The graphic shows there's only 145 in the pot. Brian had put in a three bet, I believe, to 75, in which both Anthony and Matt had called, as well as Jeremy. So we went four way to the flop, nine, three, five, two diamonds. Matt check calls with his flush draw and drills it on the turn. Disco. Brian does have the ace of diamonds. Matt's got the second nuts, but Matt, or Brian is still very much alive in this hand, drawing to the nut flush. So six remaining diamonds here for Brian's hand. And he's gonna make the call. Yeah, no point in raising there. Boom! Oh, gets there. Jesus. oh, the suck resuck. Welcome to the game, Brian. And let's see. I mean, and the thing is, this isn't necessarily going to slow down Matt here because he's already got the second nut. So Matt's going to fire again. Brian's going to think about it for a second. Really, just thinking about Vegas and the Mirage. Sorry, I had to use that <laughs> line. Right. Yeah. And uh, and now he's going to think about how do I get value here. Oh, he's going to do the relook. Oh, the relook's so painful. And you can tell by Matt's sizing here that he knows there's a good chance Brian has 
the ace of diamonds and or can if he has no diamonds trying to get called by a six pair of jacks there's the raise and matt i think has a pretty easy lay down he hates he knows it. it he looks he looks he's like really man uh right now he's just doing that he's like god really and now he's thinking what do you have with your ace of diamonds what else did you have did you have a random ace king do you have an ace jack do you have you know do you have i mean do you really have aces i mean he did he did make a re-raise pre-flop And I think I think Matt gets away here. Has no. M Brian is never raising the Queen of Diamonds ever. Not that his hand played out. No. And after Matt check calls flop and then leaves the turn on the Jack of Diamonds and leaves River, unless he's putting Matt on a Stone Cold Bluff, he's yeah. never raising worse. No, you're right. Unless Brian literally has. Yeah, I mean he he's 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 never it, any other diamond he flats. The Ace of Diamonds he pops. You know, and that's that's where Matt's at thinking. And this is the, this is the crappy part, right? Matt obviously knows he had the best on the turn, and on the river here, he's thinking, "Do you have the one card that beats me? I mean, literally the one card." I think Matt hates it, but I think Matt knows he needs to fold. He might do one of. He the... did re-raise. Pre the graphic doesn't show that he re-raised pre a Lynch King nine one nine one one nine, but there was. It was open at thirty five, re-raised to seventy five. He did. There he was did. a three bet pre flop. Yeah. I'm mostly positive. And so it's 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 actually relatively straightforward to put Brian on having at least an ace. Why not the ace of diamonds? Having an ace, like, yeah. I don't think Brian is ever raising the queen of diamonds here. Yes, I am at Stone's Casino Liquidation. Uh, feel free to send over a pizza. The one thing like, we talked about, like, we talked about like, the way Jeremy plays and getting net hands paid off. Brian's another player who can put a lot of pressure on a lot of players. I mean, if this is, like I said, if this is Danny, if this is Peter, that makes a raise, Matt has already folded a long time ago. Brian is one of the players that does have it, that is maybe one of the few guys in this room that is capable of bluffing here. Oh yeah, he's capable of totally making a move right here. Unfortunately for Matt, he's not, and Matt correctly folds. Nice lay down, Matt. It's not the easiest, especially relative to the pot size, right? A couple hundred more to call into 1400. But, you know, he knew he was beat, and he's going to be happy when he watches that back that he at least made the good fold. You know, not happy about what the river was, but happy that he made a good fold. Uh, somebody in here had asked earlier, uh, I believe, one of the qualifications for our bad beat here. Bad beat's at like 56,000-something. Uh, any quads beat. Yeah, qu qu any quads? Any quads. Any quads beat or better, guys. Both cards play. End of story. And unlike some places, uh, you don't have to have a pocket pair to make your quads. It's just both cards play. So if there's deuce, deuce, deuce on the board and you have ace, deuce, and somebody else makes whatever, then it's okay, that still plays. Yeah. You don't actually need a pocket pair, which I think is kind of a con at some of the other establishments I've been to. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm trying to make sure that I have this right. That, I mean, I thought I saw Brian 3 bet to 75. I thought he did too. There was multiple greens I, I out there. I thought there were several yeah. green, green chips out there. There was. But Matt is Matt calling, I mean, Matt calling King Deuce of Diamonds, calling a 3 bet with King Deuce of Diamonds. It, doesn't I know I know it that would that would kind of almost make more sense if he if it was just a single open out of Jeremy rather than a three bet out of Brian. Yeah. Um. Just pen. You have a Writing utensil. Writing utensil. Who writes anymore? Jeez. I'm gonna message Mr. Matt Holtz call right now and verify. You're gonna see. Hey, yeah. is that a three bet? Waking up with another pocket pair over here. So look at this. So Tom here with a mystery hand re-raises to th or raises to three and a quarter. A super sizable raise here. Um, and Brian, I mean that's a that's a large raise here. Pre flop. Brian's gonna think about it for a minute here. Sixes. I mean he has got to think he's behind. Maybe set hunting. Do I really want to get involved here? And he's gonna be out of there. And so is RD. So Tom's gonna take it down. And we haven't seen a whole lot of crazy action from Tom, so that's not crazy to see that Brian laid down a pair and that RD laid down, you know, ace queen of diamonds. And what's it gonna show? Oh, pop tens. the tens, yeah, not surprised. I would have assumed, I would have just guessed that Tom had tens or better, you know? 
That dealer in the dealer box there is Jen, uh, one of our gorgeous Jen. Well, yeah, gorgeous Jen, one of our regular Stones Poker dealers. You know, all of these Stones Poker dealers here, guys, are um, are really solid. I mean, me and Jacob both played at a lot of different establishments, and these dealers here do not mess around. They're really good at their craft. They're good at their trade. They know what they're doing. Um, and Jen's one of the best. Yeah, super solid establishment. Here. Um, it's not a common issue, or I've noticed when they bring a new a new uh, dealer on staff here that Jen's one of the ones that's showing them the ropes. Okay, you know, that's yeah. showing them like, how, how to get it done. Jen's like, okay, so this is the player that's going to needle you. This is the player who always causes a problem, and they're always pointing at us. Basically. Yeah, we're like, what? They're pointing at us, like, what? What, what did I do? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Just nah, Jen, the Jen's the best. Runs a tight ship. Ten, eight, seven. Jeremy's got a pair of eights. You can't see Peter's cards. Peter's got his cards over the reader. Um, I wouldn't doubt if Peter has a ten here. We, we couldn't see Tom's cards at last hand. He ended up with a pocket tens. He, he flipped over and showed him. Um, with our RFID cards that we have here, if one of the cards, for whatever reason, isn't showing up, it, it will not read the entire hand. So if Peter, who did lead out on this 10 high flop, does have a 10 in his hand that somehow isn't reading, as we saw it with Tom's cards in the last hand, um, that would make a lot of sense here. Jeremy checking out. I mean, this table's been fun. There is such a widespread range between all of the players, play Playing styles, styles personalities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these, like, there are, there is a, I mean, I feel like every player at this table represents a solid, different type of poker player demographic. Like, boom, 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 all the way around. Yeah, from one end of the spectrum to the other. Danny yeah. all the way to Jeremy. Yeah, exactly. And no, I love it. I totally love it. This is a super fun random mixed player game here. I wonder if Brian's getting lonely without Anthony on his side. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Ryan. He's got to step. He's got to step outside to call his mother. Anthony's busy right now. Okay, so I got clarification there from Matt. Like the graphics were correct. I apologize for saying that the graphics were wrong. The guys in the back had it right. That Brian did flat aces. Oh, he did. It was a flat. I thought it was okay. So those multiple green chips you saw it must have been must have been um, Brian's flat and then Anthony's call as well. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because you're right. I, I definitely, I, I probably can't see Matt uh, like calling a three bet there with King Deuce of Diamonds, I mean, even in position. So yeah, that makes more sense. That. Yeah. All right, so King Eight Five here, two clubs going to the flop. Uh, Matt with a mystery hand. Jeremy flops a five, checks around. Uh, clubs get there. They complete on the turn here with uh, a Queen of Clubs, uh, three on the river. It's gonna table the five. And that's going to be good. Matt's going to give one more check and probably throw him in there. Yep, Jeremy's going to take that down there. So, okay, now that we have a clarification on that hand, we know that the guys in the back of the graphics guys, they had it right. I was wrong. Um, he does. It, it that, does actually, well, well, Grant actually says it does make that fold by Matt even more. That's what I was just getting yeah, at. Right yeah. now. That makes a fold that much more impressive. Yeah. Considering, I mean, a player's three betting range, you know, is going to have a lot of aces, you know, and namely, you know, obviously, aces, ace king, ace queen suited things, hands like that. Um, uh, gives Jeremy's open, and you can probably even like three bet uh, Ace Jack profitably, expecting the call. Um, so with Brian, I'm sorry, with Brian just flatting there, he can have a lot wider range of hands yeah. than than just you know big aces and and queens and things like that. So like the, that does make that fold by Matt that much more impressive. Exactly. Against a th if it was three bet, then. And the fold, you know, does seem much more obvious, you know. Obviously, well, obviously he's going to have the nuts here. I mean, he, even then, it's still pretty, I think, you know, most players aren't going to ra raise River Bluff there. But with ha Brian flatting there, um, and the way the hand played on the, out, out on the flop, I think then, yeah, then Brian does have, you know, a few more bluffs there than, than just nut nutted hands. Yeah. Hey, look, I think, is that Matt texting you back? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It probably is. That's Matt. <laughs> I was gonna say. I just love that you have Matt on super speed dial. So you're like, hey, yeah. I need some clarification. And in, in about 20 minutes, you'll see Matt pick up his phone, and that's probably him. Yeah. That'll be him and he's just me like, back. yeah, Jake, he flatted with aces. Yeah. Wow.
I'm Lyman's son. How about a real show about down and out homeless poker players who live in their cars? But you know what's funny, man, is I, you know you walk by some of these higher limit games, and I've seen guys sitting there with you know 40, 50, 60 k plus in front of them, and they got holes in their socks. And, you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, I, mean, I played in a, a, a couple WPT events, and uh, even just running across. Uh, uh, God, now I lost his name. Uh, at the uh, at the at the Rio, um, damn! I started the story, and I can see his face, and I can see him. But a very very well known, successful. Uh, High lim limit poker player, and if you walk by him in the poker room, you know, in these swing big events, you'd swear he's homeless. Yeah, yeah. I right. mean, like, yeah, um, yeah. you know, I ran, uh, I ran into Esfendiari uh, no less than three times, and every time I saw him, he was just <laughs> eating. He was in the cafe searching for food. Normal, he, was too, yeah. here, he was getting food over here. He was getting food over here. He's just, he's just, gra he's always grazing. I don't even know if he even plays poker. He just goes there. He's like, I'm just gonna eat, and sign some autographs, take some pictures, kiss some babies, shake some hands. Doesn't even matter. No, God, no, it's gonna kill you. You know what show I really used to like? Uh, a show, it was back on uh, one of the first HD channels, and it was uh, Phil Locke and Esfendiari, uh, and it was- I a, Bet You. I Bet You, yeah, bet you. and it was just all about, yeah. it was just, they walk around town and just prop bet. And that was the best show ever, those man. Those sick human beings. I loved that show. That was such a fantastic show. Go back and watch some of those if you can. Buy the DVDs, you will not regret it. <laughs> and of course, Angry Pollock hated that show, which is why we don't get along with her, which is why we don't let her in the booth anymore. <laughs> Classic. All right, four ace three here, two spades. Uh, Peter with the best of it here with aces. Uh, Brian missed his pocket sevens. Uh, he says the dude you're thinking of is Justin Schwartz, maybe? Justin Schwartz is a, another human being that has been accused of being homeless. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, uh, no, but that's not what I'm thinking of. God, it's gonna, it's gonna kill me. He was a former WPT Player of the Year. I'm trying to pull it up now. Um, he was like, yeah, w WPT Player of the Year, like in 2010, 2011, maybe, a few, a few years ago. God. Sorry, I'm sorry, I get guys, a, a poker game is being played right now. Okay, we're watching it here. So Peter's gonna bet on 85, and uh, Brian's thinking, hey, is my ace good here? I don't think he remembered the 10. Um, or Brian's thinking, are my sevens good here against Peter's ace? He obviously doesn't put Peter, and he's gonna make the call just in case. And they're not. Chip stacks, guys. Anthony and Jeremy here on the big stacks with uh, 3.4k and 3.1k, respectively. Oh, so why are we? No, that's not the second Monday of the month. That was just last Monday. Never mind. Uh, look, I was going to mention PLO, but that was we played a WPT or a, wow, get off my phone, Jake. Uh, PLO8. No. Oh wait, I can talk. Don't, look, here's the deal. Don't lie, you're on your phone catching Pokemon. Don't <laughs> try to pretend that you weren't. You're like, Charmander's in the booth. I think it's been built up too much now, and I just, yeah. Yeah, it's already over. We're oh, already wait, over almost there. Nobody cares anymore, Jake, <laughs> about your homeless poker player friends that aren't really homeless. Matt Salzberg. Yes. That's it. <laughs> now, we're, now we can all sleep better. Got it. Yeah. I can just, now I can like, I can like, I'm then, back. I'm okay. We're back. All right, and because we're back, Tom is going to raise it to 25 here with Ace-10 suited, and it looks like Peter is going to make the call. Oh, maybe Peter's gonna, is, oh, Peter's gonna raise, make it 135 with Ace-King. There we go, Peter. Domination here. Uh, Jeremy, our uh, any two card wonder over here. Yeah, he's out of there. And Brian, I'll be checking out too, along with Anthony. And in action, oh, here we go, RD. And back over to Tom here, our initial raiser, who is saying, yeah, clearly my ace of hearts is no good, and he's absolutely correct. Um, I don't know what Key Corpse and Angry Polak are texting each other. Uh, you don't want to know. Uh, Rick and Barstow, yeah, I, yeah, Salzburg, that's what I'm saying, Salzburg is anything but homeless, yeah, but if you, like, in, just in passing, 
I went like, like, God, like, come on, like, you got like a couple million in career winnings, and I like. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, don't bust out your EBT card. Like, you're good. Yeah, you're good. And those are some pretty, pretty homely flip flops you're wearing here, bro. Yeah. All right, Peter's gonna make it 30 here with pocket force. Oh, a 35 to call. Actually, Peter just called. And Jeremy makes the call as well. Now, V-Cross Poker's in on, in on it, too. I don't know what these guys are like. It's like they're ganging up against me here. Oh, like. Who wouldn't? All right, so five, three, eight, two clubs here. Uh, we can't see our couple mystery hands here, but we know Peter has fours. So we're going to call it the best, because it's the only hand that we can see. And it looks like, uh, all right, heads up here. 65, bet and call. Jack of hearts on the turn between our two mystery hands. Did you just... <laughs> what is it, expire in 50 minutes? I'm used to not fresh. Look at this guy. You guys want to wait? Yeah. What? I'm going to be like, you can like get out of the booth and go like... Go leave. I'll take your spot if you want to eat. No, I'm okay. All right. <laughs> oh, wow, thanks for saving me, I guess. <laughs> Don't let JFK in the booth, please. Don't do it. Look at this, Mountain Kings. And it's over before it began. Okay, so I'm Lyman Summons a question. They're asking us, can we go over the pros and cons of raising uh, 3x lumpers versus 6x and higher versus lumpers preflop? Is one type of preflop raised more profitable than the other? Um, yes. So, I'm always of the school thigh as most players, profitable players are, I feel, um, as most poker coaches will tell you, that there's only two reasons to ever bet. Is that is to try to get a better hand to fold or a worse hand to call. So when you're making your sizing, you have to keep that in mind. Um, if you're just, you know, opening, let's say, you know, arbitrarily a, a hundred bigs, no one's ever gonna call you without the goods. Without without something that most likely crushes you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. That said, if you you know as as you continue to you know bring your sizes down, I mean, obviously that's an exaggeration. You know, probably a pretty pretty bad example. Um, now what about now? Let me ask you this real quick to, to kind of sidebar the same question. What about being consistent with your raises? I mean, raising four x with a ten jack as opposed to kings, always making it the same four x. That I think is the important part. No, no matter what size you're raising. You should be consistent whether you're opening suited connectors, or whether you're opening aces, keeping your bet sizing consistent. Now, Otherwise, it's obvious if you only raise six x with aces or kings, and yeah, you only exactly. raise three x with like an ace queen or ace king. And how? And, and there's a difference between opening a pot, being you know, being the first one into the pot, versus opening over over limpers, yeah. um, and what you're trying to accomplish there. Um, happy birthday to Jeremy. With a 9-6 and Danny. Oh, with the overpair, with, with the, the gunshot. This we can see some fireworks here, guys. Hold on, we're gonna sidebar this conversation. Um, so Danny's gonna fire out a hundred, and Jeremy's gonna think about it for a minute, and oh, he's gonna all in right off Just the bat. Just shoves it. Just no doubt. And this is that that might be rough for Danny to get away from. And and I see Danny could almost see Jeremy doing this with maybe a pair and a fluster, maybe like ace five of spades. Why not? Maybe six something of spades. Why not? I mean, Jeremy's range could be anywhere. And that's what Danny right now is basically in the box trying to figure out. Because Jeremy could do this to him with a lot of hands, not necessarily just a 4-6 or a 6-9. Yeah, he could be doing this with, I mean, he could do it with spades, he could be doing this like with any random 6. In which case, I mean, if, if Jeremy's doing this with just a, a straight draw, Danny's blocking two of the nines. I think Danny might go with his hand. Because if he does shove with open-ended, then yeah, you're right, Danny's, Danny's killing all of his outs. And if he's jamming into the flush draw, he's ahead of, anyway. And this isn't exact, and you know what? If this was a rainbow board, I think Danny would have already made the call. But I think the spades. I think uh, yeah, this is this is interesting. This is not. Well, I think the spades spot. actually would, would would tend to would lean more towards the call. Then you, Jeremy could have more more bluff shoves. You know, shoving with flush draws. Yeah. If it was completely rainbow, I think it's a harder call. Oh, uh, he's 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 very seriously 
ready to ready to put this in there. He's kind of just talking it out right now. We're gonna listen. Danny had the chips going, and then. Are they? Then he said, the graphic shows 2,800. That's how much Jeremy has in front of him. He's really effectively only betting 600 because Dan, that's all Danny has. For 550. Wow. Danny good gets fold, away. Danny. Good fold. That is that. Okay, so I think you put a lot of players in Danny's shoes right there. That's just an insta. Ah, uh, what the hell? Okay, fine. I'm in. You know what I mean? I think a lot of he's players. Have, well, you can have a lot of straight draws and a lot of yeah. a, a lot of flush draws. Yeah. And that's... if he's got a straight draw, you've got him in really bad shape because you're blocking two of the nines. That's a solid lay down by Danny. I mean, you know, it's like it's almost easier to lay down like. Jacks or queens there than it is nines because you have the straight draw because, because you have the blockers because you're you know you're right in that range you yeah. know what I mean and it, and it makes it hard yeah it makes it harder for him to have a nine six because you're blocking the nines so once again yeah. not, not only blocking his potential outs but you're also blocking his nut hands you're, also, you're blocking the six nine yeah I'm not blocking the four six but I mean yeah uh, so I mean yeah there was a lot of talk going on about you know bet sizing pre flop and things like that I mean, once again I, I don't ever have you know raising six six is big but like I said like Gate Corp's made a lot of Good comments here. It is, it's very, very. I mean, the easy thing in poker when you're talking about strategy and things like that is, oh, it depends. But then, I mean, the honest answer is, it really does. I mean, how how many limpers are, how deep everyone is, um, well, and, 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 and how the table's playing as a whole too. Because I mean, we've all been at games where, okay, somebody raises, you know, let's call it like a one-two game. Somebody makes it ten bucks and everybody folds. Then we've been at the same one-two game a week later, and everybody's making fifteen, 15, 15 and, everyone calls. And, and there's seven callers every time. Yeah. And so that really, it's and, very it table really, dependent. It's there. player dependent. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, and so you always got to think about like what you're trying to accomplish in the hand. Jake's spewing. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have spewed. <laughs> yeah, you got to think of what, namely what you're trying to accomplish in the hand, Nate, and, and not just not what you, what you're trying to accomplish, and probably you know what should you be trying, what should you be trying to accomplish? Are do you are you are you just you know running you know playing scared and trying to get worse hands to fold and betting for protection like a, like a fish? Or are you are you trying to really you know play this game for an extract value and play it profitably? I mean, in which case you know I go back to you. Only only reasons to ever bet are to try to get better hands to fold or your worst hands to call. When you talk about so when you talk about pre-flop raising and sizing, you know do you have you know a, a, a value hand? Or are you raising you know I mentioned earlier when uh, Jeremy had opened and uh, Brian I said you could probably you know three bet you know you know ace jack off there. Profitably expecting to get called because your hand is just so far ahead of his range. Yeah. So, and that's the spot where you're three betting actually probably hoping to get called, and because you're just probably your odds are you're probably ahead. Versus if you're you know three betting the hand like nine, ten, or six, seven, there's a good you know you're three betting as a bluff. Um, and so you know trying to you know what you're trying to accomplish in hand makes a, a big difference. And honestly, it's one of those things. I mean, I, I'm I'm probably you know. Verbalizing it, you know, the best way possible, but it's one of the things you really just kind of have to feel out with experience. All right, queen do six here, pair of sixes for Brian, a whole lot of nada for everybody else. And Brian with the best hand is just going to fire out off the bat. And Peter's got position, and he's going to float him one, see what happens. Maybe peel the spade on the turn, maybe peel a seven or an eight, pick up a, uh, oh, look at that, peel an open ended spade draw. What a card here. For, for Peter to just pick up there for floating. So Brian, let's see what he does. He checks it over to Peter, who now has the opportunity for a huge position semi-bluff. And Brian laughs about it, and Peter makes it what, 90? Is that what that is? It's either like 90 or 115, I can't tell. Him. 190, that was way off. <laughs> Great turn card for Peter. <laughs> Slappy Swanson uh, Samsonite. <laughs> I was way off. Uh, Rick and Barso, to correct you, all in poker is not illegal in California. It never has been, and it never will be. What they made illegal was bank transactions, not poker. You can still legally play poker online in California. 
Are you some kind of lawyer or something, huh? I am. Uh, I'm actually probably too familiar with the 2006 UIG. I had a had a gaming attorney to go over it with me and everything. I mean, we just it, it was it was a big deal for me. Yeah. Too all too familiar with the UIG. Don't uh, don't sugarcoat it. Tell me how you really feel, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> People think that you know, just assume that because well, you, know, you can't do anymore that it's illegal. And it's just it's not the case, unfortunately. And you can do it. There's still sites that offer uh, U.S. players, California players, online options. I'm I'm not shy at all that I play on Bovada. Online poker, uh, Plastic 6 online poker is not illegal. Check your facts, son. Angry Pollock. I love how her love for me just like shines through the chat box. Oh, it shines through. Like by love you mean hate, but yeah, it's pretty much Jake's the same. Jake's the smartest degenerate that lives in this car that I know. Uh, I play on Bovada. Uh, I do not play on ACR, although I have heard good things about ACR. Do uh, it. I've heard there's, there's some good games. So, so I'm Lemon Sun, sorry, he's talking about, I'm sort of confused the description of the preflop raises in general. 3-5 game, I play pretty tight, so I assume I would want to raise a higher multiplier to get more money in the pot, as generally I have the best hand. With that being said, if, if you have a fairly tight style, I think that if you're making larger raises, that players are going to sniff that out and be less likely to call, if you're pretty tight. Personally, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would I would still kind of make your average size raise, period, and not not necessarily go higher or over the top. Because, I mean, let's face it, if, you, if you're making large raises and everybody's folding, then there's never going to be any value for there. You have to yeah. let somebody get some sort of piece of it to at least pay you off with a draw. So there was a, a, a great... Uh, I'm sorry, I'll get to it after this hand. Jerry makes it 35 to go, 6-5 off. He's going to get action from Tom and Brian. Boom. Queen, 8-5. Jeremy gets a little piece of it. Don't know what Tom and Brian have. Jeremy's been in like 75% of these pots and he's still crushing it, you know? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm in. Tom now is cutting out chips for a raise. Jeremy bet 75 and Brian made a pretty quick call and Tom now... Tom's been playing relatively snug at this table, so I think his raise holds a little bit more weight here. So Jeremy calls, Brian flats, Tom is going to raise it to, I think we're going to find out here in a minute, but I think Brian's going to be out of here. Raise a 375. So, I mean, uh, there was a great um, video that put together, uh, I don't know, but it was just a, just a small piece out of it. Uh, that you can find on YouTube uh, from Jonathan Little talking about uh, pre-flop bet sizing when you're the first opener and you know trying to extract value and get callers and it, the math broke basically broke down if you can get more people to call you say like the hand specifically like if you have ace ace and you open to uh, 6x and get one call or you know two callers you know or and then versus if you open to 3x and get Five callers. Yes, you are going to get drawn out on more. Yes, and that's people. People hate getting drawn out on. I got. I got news for you, folks. It's going to happen no matter what. Yeah, you, I mean that's part of poker. Well, the only, um, hands but, are, the, only the only big pots you're going to be in are the people where hands. You know, where have people have equity, hands to draw against you. Equity against you. Know? you. The math is pushing you. Actually, have more equity with raising, lowering your raise size a bit, and getting more people to call you with junk. You want people to call you with. You want people to call you with bad hands, with hands that, that are behind yours. And that's why you saw, you see in tournament poker, raise sizes have gone, you know, back, or way back in the day was like, you know, three, three to five X, and you go look at uh, Harrington on Holden's books, you know, recommended raising you know, three to five X, now pretty much was the norm. And you look at, you know, the final tables with the World Series poker, where the average raise size was pre-flop, you look at, look at that. And over the years, it's steadily declined, so now we have players, it's standard for players to just two X or like 2.1 X, the whole tournament. The whole tournament, What yeah. they realize is when they're opening, you're laying the big line, such a great price to call with, a bad hand out of position. You're, you're, you're inviting players to call 
in worse spots. If you truly feel like you are a better player than them. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling here. But inducing players to call with bad hands in bad positions, it's plus EV for you. So we got uh, the hand developing. We got Brian with the mystery hand. Jeremy here with open ended. And looks like Jeremy's gonna fire. Brian's gonna call. Not the river uh, that Jeremy wanted to see. Jeremy just pairs his fives and puts a four card straight on the board. Our uh, action tracker is catching up here, but he is gonna make uh, Brian think about it for a minute. Looks like he's gonna fire 225 into this pot here. The numbers are not necessarily right on that pot size, so don't worry about it. He did not bet 225 into a pot of 35, I promise you. see Brian's cards. And uh, you can't see the entire board there, but the river was a five. So there's three, four, five, six out there. Oh, the river was five. It was a five. Yeah. It was a five. And uh, you have six, ten of hearts there. Uh, the river was a non-heart five, I believe, as well. Uh, JCW Poker says the tourney is different than cash because there are no ICM considerations. Well, that is true. There are no ICM considerations. You still, just for cash, you can induce players, I mean, you know, in cash, you're not usually raising, like, you two, two extra 2.1x, but you can still induce players to call, you know, if you consider yourself a better player, and try to induce a worse player to call with a worse hand in worse position. The same principle applies. Cash games tournaments, all of it across the board, it's extracting value and getting people to play worse hands against you, you'll make more, you'll make more money doing it. So it looks like uh, Danny switched over to seat one there, and uh, Spencer switched over to seat two. So we got a little uh, musical chairs here going on. We're just playing catch up. Apparently, Angry Polak uh, slash Veronica is selling eight by ten glossy signed pictures of Jake for twenty five dollars a piece. So go ahead and hit her up if you guys would like one of those. I don't know how many she uh, has. She probably has a freakishly large amount in stock. Uh, the graphics, by the way, that showed uh, Danny is having 150, I believe, as you can tell from a stack there, are definitely not correct. There's some white chips or something? Yeah, there's a stack of white under the stack of green, so Danny is well over 150. And on to the next hand. The also big thing you're going to see different in, in cash versus tournaments is uh, SBR, stack, stack to pot ratios and affect the stack sizes in pots. With another reason why you can, in tournaments, you can actually go, like, you can go crazy with it and, like, lower your rate of sizes so small because players, you know, one, one you can't reload, but two, um, in cash games you're, where you're usually playing 100 big blinds deep plus, um, in tournaments, it's very, very common place to very, very quickly be playing 40 bigs or less. Mm -hmm. So. Puck 66, to answer your question, uh, Veronica is actually Angry Pollock. Uh, she's another one of the commentators here that you'll probably see in uh, the next few weeks. Oh, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about Veronica for and there's a lot of our first time Gate, 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 gate like, Corp said Veronica's my mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, not, that's not true. Mom. Ah, the meatloaf. Looks Adopt. like we got a new dealer here in the box, Octavio, action dealer here in the box. Now that Spencer's changed seats, I would actually expect him to open up a little bit more. Where he was sitting before, he had uh, Jeremy two seats to his left. Yeah. That's going to kind of keep him in check. Yeah, you know? Jeremy, Brian, Anthony, like just doom, 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 yeah. you know? So, yeah. I'm Lyman Sun. Anytime, man. Glad you're tuning in, hanging out. I think, uh, you know, this all boils down to uh, Jake's catch-all for poker, which is, it depends. <laughs> it's, it depends. It's, like, it's, it depends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Octavio, coming in. Yeah, uh, you know, it, like, like, like we, we touched on base before, like, I mean, every table is completely different. So, for me personally, when I sit down at a new table, Unless I'm getting like a monster, I don't generally like to get involved in the very few first couple hands. I just kind of like to like, like sit there and like warm up and see what people are doing, and see what people are playing. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't want to sit down and be like raise, re-raise, three bet. You know, like I'm just like ah. Let it happen just... organically. You're just gonna like, exactly. Yeah. I mean, unless I unless I sit down and instantly wake up with like I don't know tens are better. Like I'm just kind of hanging out. I'm just seeing where the table's at, seeing what's going on. 
Yeah, it seems like for me, the, the times that I've kind of gone into games with the mentality, of, okay, I want to go run over this game, have, have ended very, very poorly for me. Yeah, yeah. Wow, ace, king, 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 wow. five. And this, unfortunately, is not the first bad beat hand. We're like, come on, bad beat, do it. Not going to happen. Uh, JCW Poker, if your question has not been answered already, we stream on Mondays and Wednesdays from 7 to 10 p.m. And sometimes we and hit sometimes, the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Weekends like this Sunday, we're going to have a final table of a tournament uh, yeah. this Sunday. We don't know exactly what time that final table is going to start, but if you click the heart, subscribe to the channel, yeah, definitely uh, get subscribe. notified. You get that blast, it comes right over to your phone, and you're like, hey, Twitch is going on. We're live streaming some poker. Liquidation says, every time I sit at a new table, I get pocket pairs and then lose a big stack. Uh, I have, I've been on both sides of that coin, where you sit down, first hand you get aces, and uh, I feel like everybody automatically just gives you no credit, because it's your first hand. There's no way you just sat down and got oh, aces. Oh, this guy's been coming in, he's you know, yeah. the show. Okay, I'll no, show No, it's him. funny, because yeah. I've sat down, I've literally got aces against kinks first hand, and I raise, and he, you know, and he three bets me, or he, you know, he re-raises, I three bet it. And, uh, and it just gets bad, you know what I mean? And then and then he looks at me, he's like, you don't really have aces, right? And I'm like, sure I do. And then he goes all in anyways, and I flip over aces. You know, but then, you know, I've been on the flip side of that and totally got uh, it handed to me before as well, so. So Anthony here made it 30 to go pre-flop with deuces. Brian defends big blind, Ooh, ace three, and king, bingo, bingo. deuce, ace. Ace for Brian, bottom set for Anthony. Let's see what happens here. So Brian checks it over to Anthony. Uh, and Anthony's going to fire up Potsy. I guess it was 65. So Potsy, he's going to fire 60. And uh, Brian's just going to lightly call here. And heaven forbid a three comes. Ooh, it gives him a wheel draw as well. This could be fun. He's going to check it. There's no way Anthony's going to check this. 185 in the pot. And Anthony's going to fire, was that 150 maybe? No, we're going to find out. gonna fire 180 and and uh, Brian's gonna make the call Whew. all right I was like well of course it's gonna be a five how can it not be okay so eight on the river uh, is gonna give Anthony the check mark here uh, Brian checks it over to him that's of no help literally nothing got there uh, and obviously Anthony knows he's good here <laughs> he just sets out a stack and Brian just looks at him I love it what are you doing you're killing me I love it the brief, the best part about this hand for Anthony is that there's a glaring busted diamond draw on this flop. Yeah. I love I love how Anthony just super bets a stack nonchalantly and the first thing Brian does is just look at him like really dude? The hard part really? the hard part working against Anthony. Anthony's gonna step it out raising deuces under the gun here. Um Brian, wow, oh wow, I thought Brian's gonna call off there. Is he's he? Thinking. He's thinking. He's thinking about he's it. He's gonna count and think the about it. The hard part is Anthony's gonna have a lot of better aces here, namely ace queen. That's what it is. If, if Brian had a huge kicker, oh, oh, oh and Brian's Brian, I think made a little oh, bit wow. of. Oh Brian's like, yeah, wow, okay, nice hand. Brian's thinking, I had outs. You don't know, but I had outs. Uh, yeah. I think I think so. Brian still made the call there. I think it would have been a much easier call for Brian if he had a lot better kicker. Uh, but as it was, uh, I think you're on the right track. I think Brian's thought process was with the way uh, Anthony bet that. It could have easily been a busted draw. Yeah. It could have been a busted draw for sure. Uh, so Puck 66, he th thinks it's bad bet size, and even that if you want him to call. And is he even Puck's? Like, yeah, I'm surprised he called. You know. 425. So the pot was on on the river when you bet 425. We had what was the pot? Roughly. Because it was raised to 30, uh, called 30. And then it was like 60, 60 and, and, then, 60, and, then, and then, then it was like one, one something, 180, 180, something like that. So it was already a pretty sizable pot, 360, it was already five, 600 bucks, plus the four, plus the four, you bet four and a quarter. So yeah. So here's the deal. Uh, with, with Brian, I think Brian's super main uh, A game is he goes with this gut, dude. Brian is not afraid to get it in there, and Brian was, he was not playing that, you know, oh, he's three, whatever. Brian was literally like, Anthony must have a busted draw. You know what I mean? Like that's, Brian was totally going with this guy. Well, if he thinks that, that Brian, I'm sorry, that Anthony's only, is always gonna check back ace queen. Yeah. And only that ace king plus, then he's got more bluffs than he does value hands there. You know yeah, I mean? Yeah. I suppose if I'm, if I'm to play devil's advocate there, if he thinks, if he thinks that Anthony's only ever betting two pair plus, 
and with raising under the gun, then he's got to either have like a turn. Uh, turn card was a four, right? Yeah, because again, no wheel draw. So if he's so deuce king, he probably, he probably doesn't have deuces. He probably doesn't have fours, and then we know he had deuces. Yeah. Because yeah. he yeah. raised under the gun, so it's either like ace, king, or nothing else. He thinks that if he thinks that Anthony's only betting two pair plus. The river, river was a brick. River was an eight, so it's like okay, river said eights maybe, but why would you? Would he really bet turn if he had an eights there? Probably not. So, I so mean, Spencer here finally get involved in hand. Sorry, he's got aces. Uh, no action, no action at all. Brian just lost a pot, so even Brian to, to, to flat him there and you know try to float and see he gets something lucky on the turn for a big draw. I just nah, he's not interested. So. So let's see if we get Danny and Brian on the short side. Uh, actually, I think those graphics are incorrect. I think Danny actually rebought, reloaded, and has a good amount. Uh, but we have Brian on the short stack here after losing that pot to Anthony. Uh, so JCW Poker says that his range isn't condensed and the kicker is meaningless. Uh, yes, but that's not the, and, I mean, you, you gotta like said, so you gotta really be positive that your that the villain, your opponent is never going to be betting. <laughs> you know, one pair never going to be you know value betting in you know, an ace jack. He's you know he's queen. He's 10 there, fan. I don't think ace 10 is a pretty easy check back. Um, but, I don't know, I, if, I, if I'm Anthony in there and that same time, I'm definitely betting, I'm definitely betting ace queen in there for sure, because there's no three back pre-flop, so you can't count them. I'm, I'm never thinking that Brian has ace king, so ace queen's like the nuts there in that hand. Better dude. So, and same thing, I'm probably, I'm probably, Thinking that if if ace queen is the nuts and ace jack is the second, I'm probably value betting all this. So I think I think it was I mean a pretty optimistic call by Brian. Um, the one thing is we know I mean players when they get stuck, you know they tend to always find reasons to, to make calls. Yeah. The, they they find bluffs that aren't there and. I said I mean maybe we're getting a little hindsight. About the hand because we My just, hindsight we vision is super 2020. Oh, right. Super 2020. Yeah. That again, In fact, you, you know, uh, I've been asked, uh, you know, like, I mean, we all have, right? Like, hey, if you have any superpower, you know, what would you want? There's a million of them out there, but I think uh, mind reading would be kind of awesome yeah. and profitable in every way possible ever, yeah. especially I mean, in poker. If, if Anthony's got like the Queen 10 or Jack 10 of diamonds there, then we're saying, wow, well, Brian's no, no wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny thing with my luck is even if I had mind reading, I know that you had nothing and I just make a super huge raise and for some reason you'd call me anyways and your hand's good. And I'm like, how could you call that? I knew what you had and you still called it. I'm the worst. Those have been some of the, like, the worst like, spots that I've I run into where it's like... Uh, I knew exactly what you had and you still called when I played it the way you should never have called. You know, and I'm like, how did you... I'm, I blacked out. Yeah. And Brian's going to make a move for it. He says, I got two cards, I got the button. Get it, and Brian. And I got $255 now, in chips. Now, this, uh, guys, Eat I gotta be it. honest with you, this is exactly what we talked about. This is Brian, one week ago today, on the 1025 <laughs> game, who tripled up and then doubled up and doubled up with under $400 and cashed out 5K. Yeah, like 400 so... to like, yeah, over 5K. And it, was, it seemed like in like in 30, 30, 40 minutes almost. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was real quick. Oh, here you go. Matt's gonna look him up. Here. Matt gives so, him action. We got the mystery yeah. here. I like the mystery. So, Tournament cash game if poker. Matt breaks everything, he's got a chance. So far, Brian's got a chance here. All right, if Brian can beat ace high, if he has a 5, 10, 4, 3, or any pocket pair, it's good. Oh, 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 3, 4, 5, what do we got, Brian? Brian's got to have that, right? Otherwise, they would have lifted the other cards from that, right? No? Yeah. They would have played the 10. Ace is that what? Ace Deuce? Ace, ace, deuce? ace he, Deuce is he make so a wheel? strong. Ace Deuce. Get He's back into the wheel. Get him, Brian. Oh, uh, Brian. Dirty dog. This you. is Bruce. Oh, I was right. like, if they lift those cards, it's got to be good, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, ace three for Brian. Brian buries the three on the river. Liquidation, oh, thank you sick. for joining us, my friend. I'm sure we'll see you soon. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a couple of hands, uh, namely a hand uh, maybe, a, maybe a month or two ago. I'm involved in a big pot, three bed, blah, blah, blah. And we, we get down the river, and uh, this guy on a on board of, like, ace, ace, oh. king, queen, XX, whatever like that. This guy shoves, and I, I tank, and I call off with a, a like queen. I think I had queen 10. I call off, you know, like you know, the very, very bottom of it, um, of my range. And uh, no, I didn't call off queen 10. I called off with, I called off pocket eights. Uh, yeah, I called off pocket eights, and he rolls over pocket nines. 
Uh, and I'm just, I was just like, how do you? And I, and I made a comment like, well, I was right that you were bluffing. And yeah. he's like, what are you talking about? I had the best hand. I'm like, no, but like. But like, you should you, never have the best hand there. Ever. Well, well yeah, I mean, like when, when you're shoving, you're, you weren't shoving for value. You were shoving. Yeah, no, you were never not shoving. You were trying to. Yeah, you didn't want me to call. No, I totally agree with you. Now that's a funky situation. I call and the guy says, oh, you're good. And so, and then so I show the eights, and then he shows the nines, and like, and said, I'm becoming. You're like, oh well, I was right at least. He's like, what are you talking about? You're right. You know, you were like, you lost. Like, that's not. And I'm like, we just we just see poker differently. Like, let's just, we don't need to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the six spots. When when you're right but you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're like, yeah, I was totally right, and it still bit me. It's still yeah. hard. It was bad. Um, but I was like, but I was right. He was bluffing. Yeah. I was right. Yeah. I know. It's the worst. No, I've done that same thing. Like when you basically have a pocket pair, uh, and you know they're full of it because they don't have any piece of the board, and they don't, but their pocket pair just totally notches you. Yeah. And you make a big bet, and they call, and you're like, I knew you didn't have it, but it's still good. <laughs> Damn it. And we've seen a couple down the stream, guys. Oh, poker. Guys, uh, hero calling ace high, and the guy, same thing. The guy like back doors. He has some busted, you know, so, small suited connector, busted like flush draw. Rivers up pair, but knows yeah. he's got knows that it's never good, so he just he turns his hand into a bluff, and then he gets hero called ace high, and it's and, and it's, the, the oopsie pair is good. Yeah, you're like, oops, oops. Yeah, it's funny whenever you get caught into a situation where you think you're bluffing, but you're really bluffing with the best hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, oh. Okay. I'm like, just have to go back to how uh, how we saw Anthony play those sixes earlier tonight. Um, when he flats there, like, and after after RD had let into him, I don't think he's ever doing that because he thinks sixes are best, especially when he bets a turn. Because I think if it, with he's not because you're not being called by worse there when he with sixes, so he's really betting his sixes there as a bluff, trying to get better hands to fold, trying to get already to, like, to fold a nine or something like that. Yeah. Um, things that like, we, like we talked about, you know, it's... So here, what do you think about what Lich King said? He said, if you want to know if you're bluffing or not, simply ask this question, do I want to get called? If the answer is no, then you're bluffing, even if you end up having the best... Yeah, I mean, that's that's the way I, that's the way yeah. I see it, yeah. <laughs> but to the other to all other players... You know, they... If it's yes, then you're value betting. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Well, just the other players, just the, 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 you people... Uh, poker has this bad habit with all the, with all the bad beats, and, or players have a bad habit of... Being results oriented, you know, with both. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh well, I, you know, I lost the pot, so they didn't think I must have done. I must have done something wrong, or they they won the pot, so they, you know, they did they did the right thing. And oftentimes, it's not the case. Um, sometimes I walk, walk through sessions, you know, unprofitable sessions where like I feel really good about how I play it. I think, hey, I just got unlucky or some variance, or got dealt some cooler setup hand, whatever. Um, and there's other times where I've had, I had some, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, I had some profitable sessions where I felt like. Jesus, I really got lucky to walk out of that thing with you know money in my pocket the way yeah, I played. Yeah. Rum cake in the chat Rum box. Cake, what's going on? Mr. Scott Ball. Best in the biz. Uh how's Vegas treating you? Or how let me ask you this, we're winding down here, one summer's coming down. How did Vegas treat you? Hey, How'd your summer, bro? Alright. <laughs> Look, now this table, this 510, has turned into a little 6 max cash game. Ready to start barreling here. Crush it. It's going to be an intense last 20 minutes here. And speaking of intense, Brian with Kings. And like we said, man, Brian doubles up, and now he's going to double up again. You, you watch, man. <laughs> you watch. Brian is never down and out. Matt, limp, did he limp the button? Jack 10? No way. And action over to Peter here. There we go. Uh, There's yeah, the grab. Yeah, so he raised a 35. And, uh, oh, yeah, Brian does the Brian's so sad flat. call. The so sad okay, okay, all okay, the okay. call. Where's the king on the flop? You know it is. Deuce, deuce, nine. Totally Brian still with the best here, I'm guessing. I don't think Matt has a deuce. And uh, Matt's got Jack 10 off. Yeah, Matt. Okay, well, Matt yeah. instantly fires 50. Fires 50 on the flop here. And uh, I love it. Brian's just going to check call this guy to the death right here. So let's see, what's Brian going to do on the turn here? Uh, check, check. And Brian knows he's got the best. Pot's at 175. He's got to bet something here. This looks very much like Brian's got a 9. He could have a deuce here too, but I mean, we also see his cards but like from, 55 or something. from Matt's perspective, the way Brian played this hand, it looks Great. like it looks like he's got a 9. Maybe, maybe hearts. If he's got hearts, Matt, I don't think Matt can hear jack high, but... <laughs> he thought about it. He did, he did. Thought about getting crowded. Brian's like, yeah, no, and Brian's yeah, not going to show. Point. He said, you know what? You can watch that on the stream. Mr. Optics, what's going on, buddy? Welcome to the chat, my friend. Rum cakes is Vegas is Vegas. Can't wait to be home. Yeah. That's so true. Vegas is uh, is great and uh, horrendous all at the same time. 
know what I mean? It's like, oh, wow, this is such a grind. Vegas in itself is a grind, Yeah. you know? I think uh, I'm Lemon Sun, you know, Brian keeps not re-raising AA King King. Um, that's not necessarily always the way he plays it for sure. I think he's just mixing it up. I think but right so, now because, it, for sure, because yeah. well, be, especially right now because he's on the short stack, honestly, I think he's kind of looking for somebody to just like shove him all in. And so he's like, okay, well, I call, I have Kings, you know what I mean? It was it was a bad board to slow play, unfortunately. Yeah, well, just because it's, it's so hard to connect the 9-9 dues. Yeah. Angry Pollock says, gosh, she loves the short-handed cash. My look, it's like six max poker is just sexy. I think it'd be really great if, if like, one, I would love to, to, to get a six max game like, scheduled and going. That'd be Yeah, fun. why not? Feel like six max five five or something like that. Six well, it's, six it's, just, five it's super action inducing when you have six handed, you know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. Puck 66 says, I can't wait for the hockey team to go to Vegas. Then he can tell his family he's going to watch hockey. Ice hockey in the desert, man. Get love on it. it. All right, ace nine deuce here, two spades. We got a pair of aces for Danny. Uh, we got second pair here. Well, it was second pair for Spencer here with a nine. Uh, Anthony with a mystery hand is going to check it over to Danny. He's going to fire, it looks like, uh, 100? 100. The problem for Spencer is he might have thought he was probably good on the flop and, ch and check back there. Well, they all checked around the flop too. Yeah, and they said so he can check back, but then once Danny, the way Danny plays, and you're firing out here on the turn, he might be just firing with just a ten. But and Spencer definitely gets away from it. Yeah. Spencer, Spencer might have thought about raising there, but I just don't think there's any need to turn your hand into a bluff at this point. I mean, it's not like there's so much money in the pot that you know doing the, you do that profitably long term. Yeah. Every time they lay down some food, I'm like, ooh, what's that? Oh, what, what's that dish? Uh, so Lynch King 9119 says, uh, you see more poker being played in six max. Uh, absolutely agree. You people get more creative in my experience than in a full ring game. Um, I, abs I think that is, you know, my religion. Um, six max poker is better poker, more poker, because, because the, the blinds are faster. Um, you have to be able to make moves. You have to get creative. You have to find new ways to win pots. You can't just sit back and wait for the nuts. You're going to be dealt junk, you know. A lot of the time. Yeah, and you got to go find a way to win pots. Yeah. So, So okay, so I'm Lemon Sun right here. says, uh, you know, I feel out a place from the game, get six-handed. I'm always looking for an excuse to take a break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, until the table fills back up. I've definitely been there. Um, and it looks like, guys, we're going into the last hand here. I think the game's going to break here pretty shortly. It's going to be our last hand of the evening, guys. I, fi I found myself in uh, Lime and Sun shoes before, though, where it's just, it gets six hand, it gets a little funky, and I'm just like, man, I hope this table fills back up soon. All right, ace, king, queen. Look Happy at that. birthday, Brian. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's going to be the great thing. Jace got me all these phrases, like when something crazy happens, you go, wee, and when somebody flops, just the stone cold nuts, we go, Happy birthday. Look at that, and he's got the diamond redraw too. Well, the third nut, just in case. At so, some point, if you're Brian, you gotta start getting yeah, some money in the you pot. Got, you gotta get some value in here right now, and I think that's what he knows. Um, and he's gonna fire. It's kind of a crappy board unless Peter has a good piece of it, which it looks like he does. So Peter's gonna look him up here for 55. And the river is, watch, here comes a diamond. Just kidding. If Peter had it, ace rag here, and check calling down, Brian it's a great card for Brian to get paid yeah. off with. Yeah, so he'll check here. So I'm going to Brian, 185 in the pot. Brian's thinking, what's my value bet here? There's no way. No, is he going to? He can't check this. He might check it. No. There's no way There's no way Peter's checking a boat to him. Whoa! Wow, I'm surprised. Maybe it's the last hand. He just, you know, whatever. Now, okay, I'll, I'll say this about that hand. We saw earlier where Peter, or was it uh, Jeremy? Why did... Oh, there we go. Peter only folded one card. It kind of threw me off guard for a minute. You saw earlier, was it Jeremy that had made the tens full and checked over to Brian and Brian had checked back? Or was, it, was, it, was that Peter that got cute there? Uh -huh. It was Peter. Peter had checked over to Brian and Brian checked back. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there might be a, a little bit of history there where Brian knows that Peter might like to check raise his nut hands. Yeah, yeah. 
And if he thinks that Peter's check calling him for only can call the turn is within that, I mean, I, I, I'm value betting there, but yeah. Um, if he thinks that Brian's gonna, you know, one bet all his bluffs and two. Now I'm, I'm stretching too far. But, but no, no, but it's okay. But, it's, value but no, no, no. It's, it's been a long day. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, like we said before, it's all about just different player styles, right? You know, yeah. you have the Jeremy and you have the Danny of the table, right? You have just like the super kind of rock type player, and then you just have the any two cards. I do what I want. I raise what yeah. I want. Player. Um, and so all in all, it was uh, it was a fun little game tonight. Great you know? game. Yeah. I think I still value bet check down there. I mean, I think you have to. I think you're kind of free rolling. You, you value bet, and then and it's a pretty easy fold to check raise. Um, even that, I might call it checkers if you think that Peter's going to check raise, check value raise from uh, ace X there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just bet. I, maybe I, I like to spew, though. That's fine. I so, like to spew. <laughs> so that's our show for tonight, guys. Um, Join us uh, Sunday for Sunday, the seniors event. Sunday for the final table of the seniors event. And then back to back events because we'll have Sunday and then Monday, the day after, we have uh, me and Jake back here again for the 5 5 No Limit on Monday as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Right on Crush poker, it. babe. Good shows, guys. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> Enjoy.